I'm just sending a signal once you're good. <clears throat> I don't remember what our signal once was. I think it was like the money. Yeah, it's the money man. <laughs> I like this one. All right. Welcome to what what are we? We are M Roy Origins. Uh Spawn of the Devil, I believe. That's fun. I like that title. All right, Alan, you ready to do this, man? Oh, I guess. <laughs> Are you prepared? Those Mentally pizza bites. Physically. Yes. <laughs> Maybe. All right, I'll take it. Hopefully those pizza bites can carry you through, man. They're too hot. <laughs> I don't know how long this game is going to last. It might last for... I don't know, we'll see. It might not be three hours. I don't know how hours. long these pizza bites are going to last. <laughs> Alrighty, so we begin our game. Oh. So, welcome to the premiere. We start off by seeing a young woman. She's uh, maybe five nine. She she's like average height. Um, she's running frantically down a hallway. She's in a very bright blue costume with, like, a cape flowing behind her. It's very classic superhero and all that stuff. She's, like, running really quick and all that, and she has a briefcase in her hands. She's holding it like, um, a football, but using her other hand to help keep it secure, and she's just darting down this hallway. <laughs> She's just r running out of breath, and then she stops midway in her tracks, looks around, and then sees a door. She begins to fiddle with the handle, and is like, all right, keys. <laughs> she pulls out the keys, and she starts to jam them in, wiggle around with it, and she gets the door open. And then she runs inside this dark, dingy apartment. She closes the door right behind her. She locks it. She puts uh, the little the little bar lock that you slide in through. I forget what they're called. My brain's not working. Um Doc, I think it is. Yeah, she puts Deadpool. all the locks on the door. Deadpool, thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. she puts all the locks on the door and it's secure. Alan, you get a brownie point. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't do anything, but you can say I you get have one. brownies. You get brownies. <laughs> I need to find a way to incorporate that. I can think of something now. That <laughs> <laughs> oh God damn it! I got it. All right, so. <laughs> She is looking around this apartment. Now, what everyone would see in the audience is that this apartment is like, oh, it's bigger than your average New York City apartment, so she's probably not there. Um, it's like a big square and when you first walk in, and then you have another square room to the right and another square room to the left, and that's about it. This seems to be the main living room. There's like couches, there's chairs, a few coffee tables, dressers, a television in the corner. Nice big window, um, like directly paralleled with the, um, or not paralleled, right across from the uh, main door that you came through. The room on the right is the kitchen. And it's, it's not bad. It's all right. It's fine for what it is. The one on the left is has a small bathroom, closet, and a master bedroom, and the only bedroom. So this is what this place is. She begins to flip on the lights, but it's not working. She just mutters under breath, damn it, damn it, damn it. And she just uh, starts to go onto the table, the coffee table. And you notice there's a crap ton of files and folders everywhere. This woman, if this is her place, does not organize. And she's flipping through it. She's moving through it, all that stuff. And, um, yeah, she's just, she's looking for something. And as she's looking through, she hears something in the next room the left room it almost sounds like a table was almost going to be knocked over like someone bumped into it <laughs> kind of jiggles on the hardwood floor and the woman looks over to it 
She holds the briefcase very close to her and she slowly sneaks over to where the noise is. The camera pans away from her and it faces a dark shadowy figure in the kitchen munching on a brownie. I told you I'd find a way to do it. Fucking hell. Alan, you're in the kitchen, my friend. Yeah, I got a brownie. You got a brownie. There are a bunch of brownies. You can stock up. Um, so I'm going to tell you your mission, and then I want you to describe how you look to everyone, so that way they can, you know, know how you are. Your mission. You are on a black ops operation, kind of. It's a bit of a minor one. You're working with a strange bounty hunter. He's coming to help the team and whatever, just to make sure everything's fine. You know he's in here as well, and you're pretty sure he's in the other room where she heard the noise, but you're not entirely sure. But you're kind of here. You're, help, you're, um, you're here to help subdue her. You're not here to kill her. You're not here to knock her unconscious. You're here to subdue her. So that way your bosses can come in and more or less interrogate her. Now, you've been working for the USSR military force. And, yeah, they're here to interrogate her for a certain piece of information. You're not entirely sure what it is, but you honestly don't care. So why don't you describe what you look like to everyone, my friend? What does Roy look like? Normally, and in his black ops uniform. Normally, flaming red hair, most likely wearing some sort of glasses to cover his eyes. <laughs> Nine times out of ten, be wearing some sort of mask. Um, what would your mask I look don't, like? I don't remember what they're called, but I'll put it in chat. Yeah, if you put it in chat, I can try and describe it for you. This is just basically exactly what I look like. I... Oh, then I can describe it for you if you want, when you put in the picture. Uh, I know the the shirt is called a cry, like a cry precision combat Ooh. shirt. Yeah. It's also 2024 when, you know, this whole campaign takes place. So, you know, it'll be, you have a bit of future stuff. Yeah, he has that typical, um, you know, in all those Western cowboy movies and all that, where you got the robbers, like, trying to do a heist on the train, but they got, like, the bandanas over their noses and mouth. That's kind of what he looks like he has, one of those bandanas over him. He's got the sunglasses. He's got the flaming red hair, the pale white skin. He's kind of got a scarf around him as well, and he's got like a bulletproof vest. He a lot of his clothing is black, so that way he can blend into the shadows and his surroundings. Yeah. Alan, you do have a gun with you because they do provide that. Do you have any specific gun you want, like an M16? Um, I don't know, an AK. Uh, My <laughs> knowledge of guns is very limited. I just know they shoot stuff. They shoot stuff. Um... Like pretty sure. I'll take a silenced Colt. Okay. Silence. I'll search that up myself so that way I can get an idea. Silenced. Uh, how do you spell that? Colt? C-O-L-T. Ooh, okay. Okay, that's, that's actually pretty. I like it. Here, I will grab a picture. I'll drop it in chat. It basically looks like a pistol, but like with a, a long silencer on it. And the magazine looks like it has a little bit of stuff. <laughs> yes, thank you, Colin. <laughs> yeah, so that's basically what Alan looks like right now. And he is sneaking up behind this woman. And you were munching on that brownie. You got the gun pointed forward. Good. Now, we're going to switch over to a friend. Anthony, would you like to unmute yourself? Damn, I hate... I hate seduction missions. I like the ones where I get to kill the person. <laughs> Anthony, why don't you Judy. describe how you look right now? Because you're in the bedroom area. You know this person is coming towards you. You kind of knocked over the uh, nightstand a little bit to lure her this way, so that way Roy could get a sneak attack on her. What do you look like currently? You were just hired by the USSR to help be a safety net and all that stuff. To make sure this mission goes out right. What do you look like? I'm pretty much still in my uh, 
as what you saw me in in the beginning of uh, Zanashiro. Uh, I forget the actual name of that story because it's slipping <laughs> my mind right now. Zanashiro, Zanashiro man of many, or no, revenge man. comes in many faces. Revenge comes in many faces. Thank you, John. There uh, you go. Pretty much <laughs> that beginning costume I have, where it's kind, I have that like kind of trench coat over, kind of like how, kind of like a the suit of what Joker wears for Persona 5, and then I have my <laughs> little kind of like kabuki-ass tech mask. Yeah. He's spooky. Now, are you still known as the Grim Reaper? Yes, I am still known as the Grim Reaper. So that's what most people call you by. Your bosses know you by your real name, but all the soldiers and grunts kind of don't <laughs> call him that hotline. <laughs> so, yeah. Anthony, that's what you look like. You know where Roy is. You know he's in the other room. Now, Roy, we're going to cut back to you real quick. Yay. So, you see this woman beginning to sneak where you're pretty sure um, Grim Reaper is. Maybe he shared his name with you? Not sure. Okay. Um, so, Roy, you know you're just supposed to subdue her. Not kill her, not knock her out, but hold her to the ground. Yeah. How do you want to do this? Um, it's up to you. Most likely approach from behind... Mm -hmm. Put one arm around her neck, push her to the floor. Okay. Uh, you have a special ability, correct, that allows you to have, like, a silent step? Yeah, it's literally called silent step. Oh, snap, I remembered. Okay. Um, do you want to roll willpower to make sure you can pull that off? So roll a d20 and add your willpower bonus. Since you're sneaking up on her, we're not going to roll initiative because she doesn't notice you potentially. If she turns around, Anthony can probably dart from behind. Either way, she's probably screwed. It's not going to work out for her, I can tell. <laughs> I got a dirty 19. That is probably enough. That is most certainly enough. <laughs> okay, so you begin to sneak forward, your footsteps practically making no noise as you almost watch the shadows of the room encapsulate your foot and capture the noise and then just have it slowly disperse outwards. It's strange sounding to you, but you're getting more used to it. You begin to sneak up to her, and now you are completely behind her, and she has no idea you're there. You can make a strength check to lock your arm around her. So you're going to roll a d20, add your strength, and I'm going to do the same for her. Luckily for you, your strength is not her highest now. You beat her by one. <laughs> oh, shoot. Thank God my strength is seven. Yeah. Because I so, rolled an eight. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I just realized something. Hey, Tam. <laughs> All right, you know what? We'll do this later. We'll do this later. I just noticed something interesting with the beta general chat. We'll worry about it later. Um, so, yeah, you lock... You lock... Uh, your arm around her throat, and she is pinned. She cannot move. Um, roll me a strength check to bake, basically kick her in the back of the leg so that way her knees forcefully bring her to the ground. If that's All kind right. of what you want to do. I got a nat 16, so... <laughs> so what would your bonus be? Because she rolled pretty high on this one. 23. Okay, yeah, you beat her. She got an 18. Oh. So, you kick her in the back of the legs, and she drops to the ground, just... <laughs> and you got her subdued. Anthony! Hiya. Roll me an awareness check. I don't do my Shouldn't be too do. hard. You want a pony. I shall try and make this happen. Uh, total is 24. Ah, thank you, Tim. Okay, you knew what I was talking about. Yeah, I was in the uh, beta general chat, and I realized it was, like, only m the admins. So, yeah, everything should be good now. Okay, so. Let's see. Um, What did you get again? I'm sorry. Total is 24. 24, okay. So you hear basically the muffled scream for a second of this woman, and then the thud as she was brought to the ground. So you're pretty sure everything's fine, or Roy screams like a woman. So. <laughs> pretty sure it's a second. Also you're pretty accurate. sure. 
<laughs> You're pretty sure it's the second one, but might as well check. So do you want to pop out from your area? I guess I'll pop out of the shadows. Okay. The shadows leave you as you walk forward and you enter into the main room. Roy, your assumption was correct. Anthony was in the other room. You two have a little bit of open RP if you want, if you want to throw some banter. Otherwise, the story will continue. So you're the demon I've heard a lot about. Yes, I have. <laughs> Wait, yes, I am. <laughs> yes, I am! <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> I have heard of my rumors. <laughs> I'm not even sure strong. I exist. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. It's going to be a pleasure working with you. And with you. And with, that, and with that nice little back and forth, you see that the main door... Door cracks open, its bottom hinge just rips up, and it just slams against the wall. The light from the hallway kind of blinds you guys for a second. Some of you may hiss. And, um, you see two individuals begin to walk in. They are your bosses. And to you guys, they're pro-heroes. To the rest of the world, uh, may, that might be a different outlook. But to you guys, they're heroes. Well, to and they have to me, they're just cash. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Um, they have a few troops behind them. They're more uh, decorated in armor and guns and all that stuff. You guys really are like the black ops peeps, so you don't have as much armor. You want to be quick. So these guys walk in and going to the Carnus Domain chat because TJ did describe him. You see uh, one very tall man. He's about 6'1". And he looks relatively young. So, he is wearing a red spandex outfit. He has golden leather gloves, golden leather boots, and a golden cloak with a red hammer and sickle design. And uh, beautiful. he has a same chain and pendant. Of the same thing, of the communist system. He walks in, and you guys know him to be, as he kind of pulls out a magical hammer and sickle. The sickle has a chain, and they're both golden. You know this to be the famous Soviet savior, the hero of the USSR. <laughs> and behind him, you see a much older creature. A much older being. He hovers in, and he kind of looks like Doctor Strange, except his clothing is a lot more rugged and old. He has a long, long beard that's kind of moving on its own, like he can control it, so that's a little disturbing. But <laughs> you notice that he has a hammer and sickle on him as well, and he has a third eye on his forehead that just opens up, and its pupil... Is that of a hammer and sickle. <laughs> and you know okay. this to be the famous communist Charles, the sidekick and mentor of the Soviet savior. And communist Charles may secretly be Karl Marx. No one can prove it, but no one can deny it. I swear to God, <laughs> if I get paid as much as the rest, I'd eat the shit off the bathroom floor. I'm going to murder all of you. <laughs> we don't get paid. Communist. We get a year in the gulag. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Well, I'm different from you, little freaking <laughs> soldiers. That's what you're called. Totally. Good luck is fun time. Out. We eat onion soup. <laughs> yeah. You see these two come in, and the Soviet Sander, uh, the Soviet Savior stands triumphantly. His well trimmed black beard, very nice, very firm, and long flowing black hair. He is majestic. And he walks up to you guys and is like, Very good, very good, my friends. You have done wonders for our country. And Communist Charles just nods like, Yes, many wonders. Thank you, sir. He nods. And he looks over to the prisoner you've captured. And he also glances to you, Anthony, and he cracks a smile. I knew hiring you would be a good idea. Better pay, you better put your money where your mouth is. Oh, we have the money. Don't you worry. Could be more if this mission is a success. It will be more. <laughs> <laughs> he 
He looks down to this person and is like, So, you were left behind by your boss. Is this correct? And she just responds, No, no. I was here sent on a mission. I was here to help him escape. And he kind of looks looks down to her and is like, Yes, yes, we noticed this. We noticed that what you had in the briefcase was a diversion. And he rips it from her hands, opens it up, and there's nothing in it. He just kind of flings it to the side, a little pissed. And he's like, we know that you didn't have the Soviet war tactics. And Roy, Anthony, you now know what the mission was. Or at least I can tell you. I wanted to keep it a bit of a secret. Just for funsies. Um, you know that a being by the name of Captain Capitalist and the little Americano had stolen the Soviet war tactics. The Soviets have been expanding into Ukraine once more. And Captain Capitalist had just recently taken the tactics. And they don't know where he is. But this woman right here is the little Americano. And their plan was to interrogate her to find the location. So, with that being said, they just kind of ask her where the tactics are, all that, trying to grip a little, little bit. And she's like, I'm, I'm not going to talk to you guys, not going to talk. And, ooh, hey, let's do it like this. Anthony. Yes, I'm going to give yourself sorry. my friend. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw beautiful. I saw something beautiful, and I had to listen to it. No, Sorry. no, you're fine. Pick oh a number, two numbers between one and four. Two numbers. Two. One. And one. I just rolled okay. a d four for it. Two and one. Alan, you will have three and four. I'm going to roll d four, and I'm going to see who the Soviet savior is. All right, is this destiny? Alan! What? So, the Soviet savior looks to you, and he kind of glances, and he kind of, like, nods his head in the direction of the little Americano, the one that you have captured. And it's clear to you that they're not getting the information out of her that they want. But he does know that you have some knowledge on torture. He's kind of gesturing, yo, get her to talk, if you could. So, Alan, how do you want to get her to talk? Your job is to basically get her to say where Captain Capitalist is. I have my chains now, right? You do. All right, then why not just wrap her up in some chains? <laughs> she kind of... Uh, she kind of like squeals for a second, like, mm! and um, <clears throat> you have her around the chains. What do you want to do? Hold the pistol to her head. I'm not going to talk to you. I'm not going to talk to you. She's a little worried, but um, she's trying to hold her ground. What do you want to do? Because she still seems like she's standing strong, but she looks shaky. Believe me, it is in your best interest to talk. I can't turn my back on my country. I can't turn my back on democracy and freedom. You dirty commies. And the Soviet savior looks to her and is like, Hey, that is our word. You can't use that. Some of us That's aren't terrible. commies, little brat. <laughs> yeah. What were you saying, Roy? That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. It is absolutely terrible. <laughs> However, we continue. <laughs> so, Roy, it doesn't seem like she's really just... It doesn't seem like she's ready to crack just yet. You definitely seem to be intimidating her, but it doesn't look like you've really done something to truly make her spill yet. Anthony, you can help Roy in the interrogation if you want. Oh, God. All you need is to keep her alive and her vocal cords intact so she can speak. 
Anything else is fair like, game. I love how you had to add the vocal cords intact. <laughs> I'm scared what you guys are gonna do. <laughs> John, like, don't forget, John, as well. John, John, don't forget. I forgot. A, don't, don't forget, this is a woman <laughs> we're talking about, alright? Okay. Remember the last time a beautiful woman encountered Anthony? Uh, no, not, oh, hang on one sec. Uh, oh, never mind. Oh, one second. Jan. <laughs> Jan. Yeah, no, I called, I answered her question. Oh, no, shut up. Stop calling me out. Jan. <laughs> okay, so do you want to repeat what just happened? <laughs> What's going on? No, I said, John, don't forget, uh, remember the last... I was pointing out, and then the last time that Anthony was encountered by another beautiful woman? Well, well, who could blame you? <laughs> but, um, yeah, what do you want to do, fella? You are still 15, keep this in mind. She looks like she's like 27, though, to be fair, I regret putting her in was like 29. <laughs> oh, you regret putting her in chains? <laughs> Either you were going to do it or I was going to do it. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm just going to run away with her and be like, you're mine now. But uh, money. Subduction and just seduction. <laughs> I just got that. Uh, well, go on, Anthony. Roy, what do you guys want to do? You have her up. She's not going anywhere. I'm going to beat her with the butt of my gun. Hold up, hold up. <laughs> Maybe we okay. don't have to use brute force. He keep puts a pretty... hand on your gun before you make contact. Let's keep the pretty lady intact. She takes a... She gasps for a second, like... Nah. <laughs> she seems very unnerved. Now I seem me. very unnerved. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm gonna turn to everyone and say, Look, if you want me to get this information out of her... I need y'all to leave and to fix that door. Okay, so Roy. <laughs> All right, well, let's, uh, let me say, let me show what Communist Charles and the Soviet Savior do. Okay. Okay. Anthony, did you add a charisma stat? I did not, but I just made one up on the spot. Okay, uh, what number are you thinking? Um, is an eight okay, or is that too high? I feel like that's too high for you. I feel like you work in the shadows more. Can I get a I don't six? feel like you... that. That can work. Six. Yeah. We both have six charisma. Then all right, I'll take the six. Doug Dimadab. Already. Doug Dimadab. <laughs> so roll me a d twenty. Add your charisma. Hold on. I'm so happy we added this stat. It makes things so much easier. Yes. Uh, where's my dice? Yeah, yeet. I feel like you just pitched it across his room. I did, and I got a 19. Oh! 19 plus, 19 plus 6, so that's 25. I'd say you should roll it on the table, but we're having fun here. Now then. The Soviet Savior looks to you, he looks to Communist Charles, looks back to you and goes, We will be outside. We trust you. Good luck. No. <laughs> he takes a few steps back. And the communist Charles hovers over to you and is like, no, he doesn't hover over to you. He hovers over to the young woman and basically goes, no, you better talk with him. You better reveal everything that we desire. Because the last, Captain Capitalist's last sidekick did not then, did not have a happy ending, to say the least. She goes, what do you mean last sidekick? Did you really think you were the first little Americano? Uh, uh. <laughs> alright, alright, that's enough. Get out. I'm just saying, she looks a lot prettier without a spear stabbed through her chest. Yeah, and he yeah, just... That's why, I know, that's why I want you guys out of here. <laughs> and he just hovers out. And that's totally a reference to one of the Alpha games, so if anyone gets know, that, damn. I was there. <laughs> I know I, you were I was, No, I was at your graduation party when you described it. It was fun. All right. Um, Roy, Anthony, you two are the only ones in the room. 
Anthony asked for everyone to leave. So, Roy, what do you want to do? I'm just going to pull up a chair and sit in the corner. <laughs> okay. You pull up a chair, sit in the corner. Anthony, it looks like that's the best you're going to get out of Roy. I'll take it. Okay. I'll take it. He, right. He's he's back a bit. His chains are still around her. All right, so I want to I want to pull up a table, pull up two chairs, one for the lady, one for me. Get some food, light a candle. And there are brownies topics. in the kitchen. <laughs> there are brownies. Some food. <laughs> All right, we'll take them. We'll bring over the brownies and stuff. Roy snags one. <laughs> so, Roy, you Roy, you mind uh, releasing her from the chains so I can use my chains, <laughs> so I can have more control over it. Right. I did not expect this to go the way it did. <laughs> I'm gonna be I, real. I, I hoped it wouldn't go this way. John, I didn't plan it either. This is nice. Right. What's your angle? <laughs> uh, my angle is about uh, 45 degrees northwest. <sighs> oh no. <laughs> Alright, go on. <laughs> I All can't right. stop this. <laughs> Nor do I really want to. I'm curious where this goes. So, little Americana, do you, do you have a formal name that I can call you? Um. <laughs> what the fuck? I don't. I don't remember if we ever gave her a real name. So I'm gonna make this one up on the spot. The original one, I don't think we gave a name. So I'll give this. I think she is the fourth one. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Captain Capitalist has gone more more sidekicks than Batman. So, uh, I mean, Elaine. I have a few... Elaine. I like that. All right, Elaine. I'm actually gonna throw that in my notes because I like that name. Thank you, Colin. Yeah, she goes Elaine. Ooh, that's a pretty name. Thanks. <laughs> So, I just want to get this out of the table. I am not from Soviet Russia. I am, I am like you, from America. Okay. <laughs> I was hired as a bounty hunter to do a little work for old clients. Usually, so, yeah. usually that means they're, they wouldn't have the vocal cords nor a heartbeat. But I make exceptions for pretty women like yourself. She kind of rears back a tiny bit, but can't move anywhere. <laughs> She's nervous. Heart rate is speeding up. Right, I want to like loosen the chain so that way like, she can move her arms, but she's still like attached to the chair. Okay, she can wiggle her arms a bit. Go on, eat. <laughs> Eat some, eat some brownies. I'm not here to shut <laughs> up. I'm not, I'm not here to harm you with anything. I'm here to help you. Oh god, you're terrifying. Okay, so she slithers her arm out. Uh, let's roll straight. Okay, yeah, she She's a snake. Out. I mean, if you're rolling straight, you gotta roll against my willpower. Don't forget these are my shadow chains. Oh, I mean, you want her to grab a brownie, right? She's starting oh, to reach. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was like, God damn it, I just saw what you put. You know what? I love this. <laughs> God damn it. No. <laughs> so. <sighs> yeah. She wiggles her arm out. She grabs the brownie very reluctantly and just. <laughs> She begins to eat the comfort food. Your hero, Captain Communist? Capitalist. Capitalist, thank you. Yes, Captain Capitalist. Capitalist. I forgot the name of that. That wasn't Anthony being dumb. That was uh, Anthony the play Anthony controlling Anthony being dumb. Ah, so nothing is new. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, nothing's new. <laughs> you offered me twice as much to make sure that you were safe. So, Anthony, this didn't happen, so I want you to roll That's the intelligence. Roll intelligence for the girl. Exactly. I was going to say, roll charisma, you little edgelet. 
What the heck? No, not not awareness. She's I know. intellect. Fourteen. Total. You beat her. She's in a very nervous state. She's a little confused. She's a little. She's a little worried, but you know this kind of gives her a glimmer of hope. And you say it in a decently convincing way. She goes, "I, I um." <laughs> Now, Anthony, what were you fibbing exactly? Just to make sure that I'm. I was fibbing doing this to say right? that I'm. See, I'm. I got offered double the money that the USSR was going to pay me to make sure that she was safe, and that she got back to, and that she got where she needed to be. Safely. Safely. Mm-hmm. Okay. She believes you. She believes this, and she eases up a bit. Now, I can only, like I said, these are old clients of, of mine, so I know pretty much everything. <laughs> mm. <laughs> pretty much everything about them, so I can get you out safely. I just need to know where you need to go. Need to know. Okay. Okay. Well, maybe one more charisma check. Eight total. Eight total? Yeah. So with a nine, she kind of looks to you as like, I, I don't know, I don't... I, I can't give away that information. I... Yeah, she didn't beat you by much, so it's not an outright victory. I know. I I was literally she, biting my. I was like biting my lips. Like, please get lower. <laughs> so she Mom, hasn't told you yet, but it feels like if you keep pressuring her, maybe just maybe. If it'll make you easier, or if it'll make this easier on you, I can take off my mask so you can see my face. Okay. Do I have to roll charisma? Again? She nods. <laughs> All right. Take your guess, mask off. I take my mask off. You see a beautiful, beautiful <clears throat> doll and 15 year old. The nice <laughs> doll line. Beautiful brown eyes. Beautiful, sexy Brad Pitt. Oh my god, he's 15. <laughs> beautiful <laughs> bullet right between the eyes. <laughs> try me, you demon. I uh, have tried you, and then you played Smite. <laughs> Anyway, back to this story. Damn. So. You ask her the question one more time. And I'm going to say, with all the factors, eventually she does kind of fess up. And she's like, he's at a nearby Ukrainian airport. There's a large B-15 that he's going to be loading the tactics onto and a few other information. Ukrainian and UN soldiers are going to be helping him on and he'll be escaping. She tells you the name of the airport. I didn't do research on that because I don't care to do research on Ukrainian airports. It's insert this from here. It's not too far away, but she does say he should be taking off in about 10 minutes. You know, that's probably not enough time to get there. Even if you were to fly. But... Maybe Communist Charles can whip something up. He is all magic, right. after all. He's so a magic man. You know, he's he's Karl Marx. <laughs> but, um, confirm. I know it's confirmed. The world doesn't. <laughs> so, my friend. Yeah. And my other friend, Roy. You yeah. two have gotten the information. Do you guys want to call your bosses back in? Yes. Okay. Right. You call for them. They come in. They're like, so where is he? Uh, he's in an air base in Ukraine. About to take in off in about 10 minutes. Insert, insert name here and all that insert stuff. Insert name here. <laughs> Psych! <laughs> <laughs> and the Soviet Savior basically goes, uh, 
stroking his beard, we probably would not have enough time on there by foot. Come in, Charles. He looks to him. Could you whip us up a portal real quick? He's like, absolutely. And you see, mm, Soviet magic, communism. He's just chanting to himself. <laughs> and then, he forms a portal. It basically looks like Doctor Strange's golden portal, except red, because communism. <laughs> Just our <laughs> national anthem is playing. Exactly. <laughs> it's great. So, <laughs> portal opens up. And you guys see straight through it the airport. The portal's kind of formed behind a bunch of crates and all that, so if you go through, you'll probably be able to sneak in. Uh, the Soviet savior says, you, Roy, and you, Anthony, a Grim Reaper. Should keep your alias a secret, my friend. We head through portal. Follow. <laughs> and Sweet. he sneaks on through. You guys go through? Yep. Later, sweetheart. Thanks for the information. She's like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> portal closes. <laughs> Come, as Charles looks to you, he's like, or looks to the woman, he's like, eh, 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 eh. Another Americano. This one shall be fun. And he just grabs her with a bunch of troops. He's like, we will take you to a fun location. John. And we got... It's just a prison. Probably. Better There's be nothing just... wrong with the gulag. It better just be either one of those two, because if it's what? the one I'm thinking, John, I... I... <laughs> It better not be what Tim just posted. <laughs> no, it's not that. <laughs> Thank God. All right, I'm better. No, it's slave work for the rest of her life. <laughs> I, I hope don't she know. heals over before you get back to her for her sake. Damn, will you even be able to get back to her? Who knows? Anthony's long love. A love that could never be. Who I'd see that movie. Those, which one? I wouldn't. <laughs> Uh, now then, my friends. We go into our second scene. You guys form on the airport area. The portal opens up, you're behind a bunch of crates, and you're just kind of sitting there. And I would like you two to both roll awareness checks. No dice, come back. I got 12. 12? I got... Hold on, I need to check with my awareness. The Soviet Savior got a 12. Awareness, <laughs> so 16. And Roy is the... He is the champion. So you guys look over the crates. You're studying around the area. <laughs> you see, my friends, there is a big B-15. And there are a bunch of crates being loaded up into it. You see Captain Capitalist, a man who looks very similar to Captain America. Red, white, and blue all over him. Money symbols here and there. He stands for righteousness and justice and a long flowing cape blowing in the wind. Made out of $100 bills, y'all. $100 bills. $100 bills, huh? $100 bills. Anthony, you're fired. What a filthy pig. (laughs) (laughs) That's what we say we're looking for. We're the captain. We're Captain Capitalist. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> Thank you. The Soviet Savior looks to you, Roy, is like, yes, very good. Yes, he is absolute pig. Don't worry. We will kill him in his capitalist ways and get those plans back. So, here is my plan. And you guys are still looking over. You see a bunch of UN and Ukrainian soldiers just kind of about with guns. He's like, now here's the plan. We group up. And we hit them till they die. And he stands up in the air and screams, FOR GLORY! <laughs> and he begins to rush forward. The element of surprise is now gone. So, right. what do you guys want to do? Is the plane started? The plane is not started. Good. So what <laughs> I'm going to want to do is I want to chain up the propellers. Okay, okay. Or the jets, whatever. 
Sure, um, you can try and do that. But first, my friends, we're going to roll initiative. So everyone, roll a flat d20 and tell me what you got. For both of you. 12. 9. Okay. Actually, Tim, that's nine. pretty good picture of what Captain Capitalist would look like. 9, 9, 9. 9. So, my friends, ahem. Uh, let's roll for them. Oh, God, these poor soldiers. Oh, God, poor captain. Oh, hey, Soviet didn't. No. Roy, what did you get? 12. Okay, uh, you're going to roll against the Soviet savior. No, dice come back. Mm -hmm. it falls off the table. God damn it, that time I didn't even drop it on the table. Yeah. Alright, that time I got an 8. Okay. So, I'm writing up the initiative for myself. And then... And then... Captain. He's okay. busting a medicant piece. So, hey, the I'm Soviet savior goes first. Then Roy. Then Anthony. Also, Roy, I forgot to mention, you can, like, fully speak, uh, speak Russian. Because you've grown up in Russia. So, oh, so you, ha you have another language under your belt. English and Russian. So, yeah. And maybe something else. Wink. So you have the Soviet savior goes first, then Alan, then Anthony, then the soldiers, then the captain. So, my friends, <laughs> thank you, Tim. <laughs> um, hey, that's my language. Ah. So the Soviet savior looks to you both and basically goes, you take care of the guards and all them. I will make sure the plane does not get off the ground, or rather, he does not. And looks to the captain, and he goes, Ah, yes! Soviet savior, Joseph E. Alex Krakowski. You and your evil red man ways will not be able to stop us. Communism will fail, and capitalism shall prevail. God, For we... Like the Cold War all over again. We are democracy. You mean the best war. <laughs> you mean the best war. <laughs> The Soviet savior looks to he's all like, actually, in my opinion, it was quite promoting. Nothing happened. Exactly. That's what makes <laughs> it great. <laughs> so, um, that's what happened. That's what happened, my friends. They had that little dialogue back and forth, and the Soviet savior is going to rush at Captain Capitalist, and he is going to try and take a swing at it. Oh, and he misses horribly. Like, he throws his golden sickle at him. It slams into the cement next to him. He pulls it back. Captain Cavalish just kind of looks at him like, really, man? And he just goes, that was a warning shot. <laughs> Roy, yeah. it's your turn. Now, uh, the savior asked you to focus on the soldiers while he focuses on the captain and the plane. Do you want to listen to your boss, or do you want to do what you think you should do? It's up to you. I do as I am told. Okay. Good boy. <laughs> um, you see about ooh, six soldiers in total. Three of them are UN and three are Ukrainian. Who do you want to go for first? They're all roughly clumped up together. All right. Let me look at my brand spanking new abilities real quick. Yes, you may look at your brand spanking new abilities. John's right, going to be trying of, to do a lot of Russian much, accents. All of these are just passive abilities. Do you still have, like, your blades that come out before, uh, above your wrists? Yeah, I do. Okay, I just want to make sure. That's my primary weapon. Yes. Yes! <laughs> Susan, John, ever since you told me that that was a... A reference to uh, Smite's design of Bakasura. I can't think. All I, every time I hear that, all I think is just like Roy turns into Bakasura. Like, no, he totally looks like Bakasura. Oh my god, it's awesome. Yeah. Fun fact: Bakasura was the first god I tried to make. Nice. Well, Roy. Power and I love to eat everything. No. <laughs> yes, um. Did you figure out what you want to do, good sir? You can make it to them in your turn, and you can attack. All right. You can probably. Think, you said there was a big group. They're all clumped together. It's a group of six. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out hell chains on oh, both shit. hands. Okay. And then just pretty much sideswipe them all. Okay. Roll a coordination check to use chains to sideswipe them. I'm gonna roll coordination for all of them individually to dodge. All right. 
coordination. My coordination. Oh my god, six. you guys are terrible! This guy is good! Yeah! You suck! Woo! And he's good. 21. 21? 15 plus coordination of 6. Shit. Okay. So, you swing your chains. Two of them just duck or just jump out of the way. They roll to the side. They jump out of the way. They're both Ukrainian soldiers. The last Ukrainian soldier and the three UN soldiers just get knocked on their asses. What? And they're now prone. So that would be the end of your turn, my friend. But you can use your movement to get closer or farther away if you want. I'm going to stay where I am. Okay. And Anthony, it's now your turn, bud. You just noticed that two of them rolled out of the way and four of them are on their butts. They are prone, which means they will have to spend their turn getting up. Um, what is the weather like? Um, it's cloudy. Dope. It's roughly nighttime. Double dope. Oh god, I forgot! No, that's your element! No! <laughs> Crap! <laughs> I've put my most horrifying monster in a perfect situation! Oh, I just need to get the right uh, uh, specs, and then we're going to have a nightmare. Crap. It is also winter, so there is snow on the ground, but it's not snowing right now. I forgot to mention that. Double dope. I wanted um, I wanted this story to take place in winter. Oh, no, winter can be pretty. All right. I'm so, going... What do you want to do? Sen Let's see. Since I see that they're, that the soldiers are prone... Ford, let me I ask. saw that sickle man, so we say this, whatever that is, missed <laughs> horribly. So, yes. I'm gonna use my shadow chains to hold down the jet. Okay, okay. You will use your chains to hold down the jet. So, yeah. this will be your action. Keep in All mind. Right. Okay. So roll me willpower to form them. It should not be too hard. Uh, the total is 20. Yeah. And roll me coordination to lock them to the plane. 23. Okay, you lock both to the plane. Now, are you going to just implant them in the ground or hold on to them? I'm just going to... Uh, plant them into the ground so that way I don't have to worry about rolling the strength check to hold it, and I can yeah. just roll willpower to make sure the chains don't break. Okay. Uh, roll me strength to see how well and how firm you get them in the ground. Seven total. <laughs> it was gonna be awesome. You had, like, in the ground. The, the but, first roll like, I had, it landed in a groove, so it was like half on, like, it was like half on two and half on twelve. So uh, I roll again. Well, I mean, they're in the ground. Y you were able to do that. Alright, that's all that counts. <laughs> You're not sure how long they're gonna stay in the ground, but they're in the ground. So, that is your turn, my friend. Uh, right. The soldiers are going to stand up and they do all four soldiers are able to get up and these two are going to try and fire at ooh cuz Alan knocked them they're going to the two that dodged are going to fire so Alan roll me a coordination check to dodge one of their attacks Ten. 10 okay one is going to hit you. So, we shall... How much health do you have in total? I don't remember. It is your strength plus your willpower. Strength and willpower. What does that 12. equal? 12. Okay, that's the average. So, I'm also wearing a bulletproof vest. Yep. 
So with that, I will be rolling a d4 instead of a d6. Okay, you take one damage, so be sure to mark that. And one more guy is going to shoot at you. Okay. And once you've marked that, uh, roll coordination to dodge his attack. At 12. Okay. With the 12, you... Oh, wow. I Actually, you get hit. Okay. So, with a 12, you get hit. And you take one more point of damage. Terrific. You're a lucky boy. So, they pew pew and fire at you. Just go, ah, take it down! And now we go to Captain Capitalist. He is going to try and shoot something at the Soviet savior. He clicks his arm, he points it forward, and he shoots out a coin. But he plays around with his gauntlet, and then all of a sudden, this little penny turns into, like, the size of a table. <laughs> and now he is going to try... Inflation. <laughs> <laughs> that is so dumb! <laughs> I, oh, love I love this love game. It. I love this game. Uh, I'm glad you do. I, I hope you're enjoying it. Okay. Um... And the, oh my god, Tim, what is that? Oh my god, why, Tim? Ahem. Tim so, banned. Tim, you're banned. So, with that, um, let's see. Okay. Josefi Krakowski, or the Soviet Savior. That's actually a John Charm reference, by the way. So, uh, the yeah, Soviet Savior. Yes, I remember that. <laughs> Okay, good. He jumps out of the way, and he's able to dodge the coin. And he says, Your tricks are getting old, my friend. You capitalists are nothing but <laughs> against originality. And as for me, he pulls out his more chains and sickles and all that stuff. I have no fun stuff for this. You know that the captain's typical... Um, his typical move is usually launching coins at people, and then making them grow big. It's an interesting power. It works. Now, my friend. Uh, whose turn is it? It's the Soviet Saviors. Okay, so he's going to try and strike the captain. Oh my god, you're terrible! Oh, you're terrible! Uh, he is going to try and throw one of these fancy new sickles, and he misses again terribly. He's like, okay, so this might not be my day, but that is fine. I have backup. Roy, it's your turn. <laughs> what do you want to do, bud? You just got fired at. All right, they've stood back up. I'm not going to use my gun. I don't want to be lethal. Okay. I think... You... Okay, go on, go on. That I'm just going to try to collectively wrap my chains around all the soldiers. Uh, John, John, uh, look at that session chat just in case you forgot something about uh, Soviet. No, I took a look. I'm not going to respond. All right. <laughs> he's so, having an off day. He's... He's so, trying. A lot of stuff. He's trying so badly. But you want to try and wrap them up, Alan? Yes. Okay. Roll a coordination check. You got a boss. <laughs> yes. Oh, God. They're fine. Yeah, yeah. Well, what happened? I got an 18 plus 6. Oh. It's a 20. Oh, no. So, with the grand legendary number of 6, the chain wraps around them and locks them in position. Roll me a strength check just to make sure it stays locked. It will not be hard. I got a 12 plus my 7 strength. You beat it. All you had to do was get above a 10. Okay, they're pathetic. Yeah, <laughs> they're poor grunts. So, you wrap the chain around, and whooshing, you lock them in place, and they're like, Ah! My guns! You're able to lock four of them. The two that dodged out of the way originally were decently far away, but four are subdued. And they're just kind of yelling at you in Ukrainian. You kind of speak Ukrainian. You can you understand a few words. 
It sounds like a lot of, you fucking gay, how dare you do this, you bastard, and all that stuff. I'm being completely non-aggressive, and like, <laughs> I have a pistol, I could just shoot them all. <laughs> they immediately silence themselves. <laughs> so. <clears throat> Anthony, it's your turn, my friend. You see that Alan, or Roy, has just wrapped everyone with their chains, but there are two guards that are still free and have their guns. What do you want to do? All right, I'm going to activate Raptor, my Raptor form, and then just try and, like, and try the guards. <laughs> the and ones wanna... that... You can take yeah. one of them out. Or you can try to. I'm going to try and take one of them out. Alrighty. Then fly over. Excuse me. Fly over. You you puff out your wings. You soar into the air. And you are about to strike uh, one of the soldiers. So roll me. What are you striking him with? Um, My Crimson Melody. What else would I hit him with? Crimson Melody forms. That giant, that giant. I think it's like I think I have it written as six foot five double a- or two handed axe. Okay, okay. His blade is literally probably about like four nine. Mm. You begin to spin your hammer around. Axe. A hammer. <laughs> this is John's cannon. Uh, you spin your axe around, and you soar towards the one guard. And what did I have you roll? Um, John's brain is all over the place today. I think I'm rolling to hit, or is the guy prone? No, this guy's standing. Uh, Roll to hit. Prowess. Oh, Prowess. Eleven. Eleven. Okay. So, let's take a look at this guy. They are pathetic. No, he dodges out of the way. (laughs) As your axe cracks the cement, and he just, he scoots to the side. And he cracks a smile and just screams at you in Ukrainian. You think it means you're bad, get good. And that pisses me off. That pisses you off, and you're not even sure if that's what he said. So, with that, we go to the soldiers. The one you struck is going to try and fire at you. And uh, roll coordination. Oh, these poor guys. With a four, he misses. And he strikes the plane, actually. He kind of hits a little bit of it. The captain just looks at him and is like, Are you kidding me, my friend? Could you aim a bit better? And, um... The other guard is going to try and shoot at Alan. Pathetic mortal, you cannot hit me. Roy, roll coordination in order to dodge... Uh, f- fucking yeah. coordination six nineteen. Coordination six nineteen. Yes. Okay. Okay. I you beat 15. him by one. Wow. So he fires at you and goes, but you just leap out of the way and and the bullets hit the plane again. And he's like, "Are you kidding me, guys? Could you aim at them better?" They are right in front of you for the American way. <laughs> and um he's he's I just hate oozing I love patriotism. That voice. He's I oozing like patriotism. He, he just looks like Stan from American Dad. That's all yes, I'm that's what he reminded me of. He looks like Stan, but if he was dressed kind of like he kind of like Superman. <laughs> if Captain American Superman really didn't mix. Now then. We have the Soviet savior, and he's like, Unlike you, I put real discipline into my comrades. Yeah! Oh! Will he hit him? He will! He sends his chain forward, and it locks into his shoulder blade. Ah! My American shoulder blade! And it just digs deep into him. And he grabs his hammer, and he locks the chain in position. And he begins to tug on his body. And 
The sickle eventually rips out, and you see a massive gash and wound, and his arm just doesn't look like it wants to work anymore. And we're going to roll. And the captain takes a decent amount of damage. So, that goes on, my friends. And you see that the Soviet Savior got a really good hit on him. Roy, it is now your turn. Dope. What do you want to do? There are two guards still active. I'm going to try chaining them. Okay. You can only chain one because for this turn because they're a little too far from each other. All right. So, uh, roll me basically coordination to wrap it around him. He's going to roll coordination to try and dodge it. Roll. Roll it, my friend. Yeah, I, I got a nat 19. So with a 13, the chain wraps around It wraps around his neck for a second. He's like, Ugh! And he just drops to the ground. Roll a strength check to keep it locked. He's going to roll strength to try and break out. Oh. These poor guys. 20. Okay. So with a 5, you lock him in position. You're beginning to cut off the circulation of his legs, so they're just kind of turning. It's just, ah! but you have a locked in position. He just cannot move. And so with that, oh well, Tim. Yeah, that's actually a pretty damn good, accurate picture of what the captain would look like. That was Gavin. Oh, that was Gavin. Oh, I usually expect it to be Tim. Tim usually posts the most pictures and gifts. Favoritism. It is. Yeah. <laughs> I love you, Gavin. <gasps> no, I love you, Gavin. Don't cry. I'll get, I'll get you something special when we get home. Wink. <laughs> uh, so, Roy, you succeeded on that one. And now we go to Anthony. There is one guard still active. And then it is just the plane and the captain. What do you want to do? This is the guy that said get good. I'm going to try and hit him again with my axe. Okay, sure. Um, do you just want to fly up and strike him again, or just rush forward and no, slash him? I, I want to not... I want to dart full force at him. <laughs> like 242 MP, or miles per hour at him. Because he made me mad. Okay, roll willpower to basically kick up the speed. And not fumble over your feet. You're going to roll two things. It will be willpower and coordination. So tell me what you get for willpower. Um, willpower is... <laughs> I like the reference, Colin. Uh, 25. Okay, yeah, you're able to build up this power easily. You're going like... You're going like the Flash. You are zooming toward... And immediately he's like, Oh god, what have I done? <laughs> and... Now I want you to roll coordination to make sure you don't trip over your own feet, because you are going relatively fast. You usually use the speed when you're... It'll be interesting. Um, 24. 24, okay. You are able to stand strong and very quickly at him. And I would like you to roll a prowess check at advantage, because you are just going so fast at this guy. So roll 2d20s, take the higher result, and add your prowess modifier. Oh. So four. Um. <laughs> I thought I was going to have to go plead. Or I thought I was about to go plead. Lord have mercy, stop going plead! <laughs> it's because I mi if I miss twice. It's just like I will I not old. hesitate to shoot you in the ass. <laughs> I never said I was going to go after you. I think I was going to turn that guy into soup. Oh, oh gross. All right, so, Anthony, with yeah. Alan's funny line, um, Anthony, Anthony, what does Crimson Melody do for damage? 1d4 plus 2. Roll that and add that. I just bounced off my dice. 4 damage. Okay, you, like, slash him and kind of cut open his stomach. Like, it's brutal. You think you see things beginning to fall out. And he... 
suck it, bitch. He's still alive. Jesus shit, man. He's not exactly dead yet, but he probably will be very soon. He is still alive. Just suffering really badly. Uh, we go to the soldier. He's too preoccupied with trying to keep his intestines inside him to, you know, shoot at you. So that's what he's going to do. The captain's just going to look to this display and be like, My god, you guys are sick! How could you do this? How could you do this to another human being? Your fellow man! This is definitely why you commies are the worst. I'm, I'm an American like you. I'm in but, money. <laughs> he just screams at you, but you, sir, are a traitor. Americans don't kill that by well <laughs> he I'll himself. take your head next. Don't don't backtalk me, mister. That's what you think, young one. Activate plead. Oh god. <laughs> you can't do that yet. It's not your turn. I know, I know. <laughs> dramatic effect. <laughs> he looks to um he looks to the Soviet savior. Uh, he's like trash talking you and all that stuff, and then he looks to the Soviet savior who's rushing towards him. Is like, egad, and he points his weapon forward and fires a coin at him, makes it grow big again. But we'll see. Okay, okay. The Soviet savior does like a neo, like just back, like leaning matrix thing. And all that dodges it, slides on his knees. It's epic. It's awesome. <laughs> I don't know this reference, Colin. I don't know this. I don't. Oh, damn. Oh, I don't know that series. You showed me it a long time ago. I don't know that. <laughs> I, don't, I can't quote Code Ment. But, um. <laughs> So, he dodges out of the way very nimbly, and that's the end of the capitalist turn. Yes, we shall watch it later. And um, he is going to rush at the captain and try and strike him. Ooh! Ooh! And the Soviet savior charges forward, he leaps in the air, and he uses his sickle and slashes him across the chest, destroying his American emblems. And he goes, ah, no! Lady Liberty! How could you do this? And he raises up his fist and it's like, all right, you want to go motto a motto? I'll do it for you, bucko. And uh, they get ready for a brutal brawl. <laughs> I love doing the voice. It's so much fun. So, Roy. Um, you think the guy Anthony's working on is taken care of? Uh, what do you want to do now? Um, I'm gonna go over and see what guns there are. Okay. Um, they're just, they're not better than what you have, unless you like. They're just basic M16s. Unless you okay. think that's better. <laughs> I was looking for one specific one. What were you looking for, my friend? Scorpion Evo A1 nine millimeter carbine. No, they do not have that. They just have very basic, basic weapons. They're kind of lame. But, you I see the like plane door... I gun name in the chat so I can look at it, because that sounds amazing. <laughs> uh, so, Roy, you're kind of looking around all these bodies, all that stuff, and you look to the back hangar of the plane, and you see it's oh, wide God, open. Oh, that's beautiful. And, ooh, let me take a look. Oh, wow, that is terrifying. I love it. <laughs> Yeah, no, nobody has a pretty gun like that. But the Soviet savior looks to you, boy, and goes. Uh, he'll just cry out, Mr. Zeroth, head into the plane. Look for the tactics. I will hold off the captain. You got it. Do you want to rush for the plane? Of course. I'm going to do the Roy Pony. <laughs> Roy Pony terrifies me so much. <laughs> like... Terrifies me so much. It, it literally looks like Bonkasaur as he's running. Alan, give us a few snorts as you run by. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's running on that come out above his hands and just. 
He's snorting as he runs by, and like Captain Capitalist, as he's trying to give like a monumental speech, he just sees you running between the battles. Like, oh dear God, what is that? That is not natural. <laughs> and I'm from America, where we have Burger King and McDonald's everywhere. I know that is not natural. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, is that a feral cat? <laughs> it looks to it's like, wow, that is the ugliest dog I've ever seen. Uh, oh, what is Ray is terrifying. Uh, so, wolf, wolf motherfucker. Uh, so, Roy, you begin to make it into the plane. And you look around. I want you to roll me an awareness check. You got it. You're going to try and look for this stuff. 17? Yes. Okay, 17. You're looking around, and eventually you find a more secure um, area on the plane, and you can begin to meddle with that. You kind of uh, fling through the boxes, all that stuff. You open up briefcases. Roll me one more awareness check for me, bud. Nat 20. With a natural 20, you find the Soviet tactics. They're in a very secured briefcase and all that stuff. You're able to open it up as you bust it open. You're able to search around the plane. It really looks like the captain was expecting to take off. It wasn't hidden as well as you thought it would be. And you have the tactics, my friend. So, with that, we're going to switch over to Anthony real quick. Anthony! Yes. What do you want to do? Um... If I don't, if I don't attack the guy, will he, the guy that's bleeding out in front of me with all his intestines in a kind of soup pile, oh. um, will he, will he die on his turn, or do I actually mm. have to deliver the final blow? Mm. Well, uh, water, or is he uh, already dead? Eventually, he will die, but there is potential for him to pick up a gun and try to. He'll have disadvantage, but like, it'll take like two turns. All right, I'm just gonna, dead. I'm just gonna drop the axe right down the middle. You're gonna drop the axe down the middle. He yep. can't really move, so right. just roll prowess to make sure you. Natural eighteen. And with a natural eighteen. <laughs> so that would have been like twenty-four. <laughs> yeah, he just kind of slowly splits in half. And he no. drops to the side. It's kind of horrifying. Oh, wait, there were supposed to be no casualties? Oops. No. <laughs> they were fine with casualties, but, like, <laughs> it helped if there weren't. <laughs> but it's oh, fine. Well. So, he's hacked down. The soldiers are just trapped or dead. They're freaking out because you just split a man in half. And they can't move. And they can't move. The captain freaks out, and he's all like, Egad! Oh, I'm not sure what we're going to do with this one, boys. Get the street sweeper. <laughs> he looks to the failing odds, and he just kind of... Oh, what is he going to do? Okay. He is going to hop into the plane. He's going to leave his soldiers for dead. He's going to hop into the plane, and he's going to try and take off. Roy, you're still on the plane. Out of my house. Roy's still on the plane, and I still have my chains attached to it. No. So, yeah. Uh, he's going to run onto the plane. He's going to hop in the control room. Roy, he doesn't notice you unless you make yourself you know, noticeable. No. Okay. And he begins to power up the plane. And the Soviet savior... Um, the Soviet savior basically rushes in after him. So, Alan, it's your turn. Yes. What do you want to do? You feel the plane beginning to kick up. All right. I'm going to just keep looking around the plane. Okay. You find a bunch of strange random weapons. 
and it's that's about it. It's a bunch of supplies for a war and stuff. You found the important goods, and that's about it. You don't what really kind find... of weapons? There was no scorpion. No, but still, I'm intrigued to know. I don't know. I don't really know gun types, so there are assault rifles, there's shotguns, double barrel ones, there's snipers, grenades, molotovs. There's food. Double barrel. <laughs> there's all food, right. rations, all that stuff. I want to take the double barrel, the sniper. Okay. Pick up the double <laughs> barrel and the sniper. I regret doing this. You want to get the fuck out of Dodge? You want to get the fuck out of Dodge? Yes. Okay. Out of the, the plane begin... is Dodge now. <laughs> you begin to run out of the plane, and you encounter the Soviet savior. He's like, "Oh, Mister Zeroff, did you find did you find the tactics?" Right here, sir. <gasps> Excellent. You know what? Let him fly off. Come with me. And he just leads you out of the plane. The door begins to shut. And he calls over to you, Anthony. We're out of a... And he says, uh, Mr. Grim, Grim Reaper, would you mind dispelling your chains? Got it. <laughs> and he begins to fly off. And you... Plane. It's like, better luck, better luck next time, you dirty commies. Now we have your tactics. Yeah. <laughs> And he flies off. <laughs> the Soviet saviors just kind of like, wonder how long it will take for him to realize he does not have them. Probably too long. <laughs> He'll be back at his headquarters before he realizes that they don't be cursing your name out the window. Yeah. It'll be like a month later, and he's going to be like, all right, time to look at these. Um. <gasps> oh. <laughs> so, yeah. get, lol, get good mates. Low 360 get. no scope Doritos Mountain Dew all written on a single piece of paper. Damn. Well, we get to the end of our little uh, plane heist and all that stuff. Plane takes off, and you guys see a red portal begin to form, and Communist Charles begins to fly, uh, hover out of it with a bunch of US uh, USSR <coughs> uh, soldiers picking up all of the living guards. One of them looks to one of the halves of the one Anthony split, held it up, and was like, should I, like, grab this, or, um, just kind of leave it here? What, what do you want me to do? Get a shovel. <laughs> he looks to it, and he's like, okay. Um, and Communist Charles just spawns a red shovel out of Communist Magic. He's like, here, Take this. You will need it. it. Just begins to shovel up pieces. <laughs> it's uh, it's quite horrifying. But oh, yeah, we're talking about the guy's blood. I don't know why, but I thought it was dirt. No, we're talking about the guy himself. <laughs> the pieces you left. I mean, he's still considered dirt to me. Damn. Well, with that, Anthony. Well, in communism, you're all dirt. <laughs> yes, Anthony, I heard my name. And the Soviet Savior. The Soviet Savior looks to you guys. He congratulates you, thanks you for your service, and and he says he hopes to work with Anthony in the future or uh, Grim Reaper. And stop using he, my actual name. Actually, he didn't. He didn't. Uh, John used it. He didn't. And um, he kind of just says to. You, the money will be shipped to your bar in Chicago as soon as possible. And how much did I get paid for this gig? You got paid a good 700k. All right, ski doodles. That is two million eight two million eight hundred thousand two hundred seventy four dollars in my safe. Why are you? Why are you keeping track of this? Because it was a joke in the beginning, and now it's awesome. Yes, I, I do. Smell that. A heist. <laughs> you want to? You want to try and heist a bar in Chicago <sighs> that's filled with other bounty hunters? Yes. <laughs> Taking down presidents and rigged votes and all that. Yes. 
<laughs> oh, that'll be a fun cameo or whatever that thing is. That'd be interesting. Well, with that, him, the Soviet savior says that he'll talk with you all soon, and he looks to Roy and says, "You, I can see a promotion coming in your future and all that stuff." And uh, he just thanks you for your work again. And he begins to walk off with all the prisoners and the two halves of a man. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. He salutes to you guys. So, with that, now, Anthony and Roy, you have a little bit of open RP. Now, Anthony. Howdy duty. You know that your mission's done. And you want to head back to Chicago to try and get as many bounty hunter missions as possible. Mm -hmm. So it's open RP. Right, for... I... Go ahead. No, no, no. Uh, uh, I'm done. <laughs> All right. I want to give Roy my card. He hands you a card, Roy. It's just, right. it's just a black kind of like business card. On one side, there's like a weird kind of eye, like red eye. And then on the back, in like almost like like etched into uh, a tree, it says one eight hundred Grim Reaper. <laughs> one eight hundred. I fell off a bridge. <laughs> no, that's my, no, that's my neighbor number. <laughs> one five five eight eight two three hundred and five. Wait, what? Today. Yes. <laughs> right. So anyway. He hands you the card. You pocket it, Roy. How and... professional. Yes. Hey, I gotta and get my hand out <laughs> Yeah. It was a pleasure working with you. You got a lot nice of potential. working with you. You got a lot of potential with you. If you ever want to join the bounty, the bounty, bounty hunting business, just give, me, just give that number a call. <laughs> By the well, way. I just have to take you up on that. Nice. Hopefully we can be partners. And by the way, the name's Anthony Howell. <gasps> the shared name! <gasps> We're becoming be... friends! <laughs> <laughs> I won't be in the bounty, the bounty hunting business for long. In the fall? What? Winter. Yeah, in the fall. Yeah. I'm going to be heading to the Washington... Hold on. The Washington High School for Heroes to... Quote unquote, trained to become a hero. <laughs> Quote unquote is very strong. This, let's see, what is it? This, this dashing Jap, this lovely Japanese lady, <laughs> uh, on, oh. I, met her, I met her on uh, one of my hunts, so to say. Uh, she practically begged me. She was de <laughs> to join the school because of how amazing my skills were. Oh, she yeah. Was down on her knees and not just for begging. Oh, God! <laughs> All right, time to fucking new to the dog. Oh! <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> I love Anthony's ego so much. The, he's on. Um... <laughs> For our players, he's referring to his origin game. <laughs> Where... It took her a lot of convincing. Oh yeah, yeah. It I finally, know. it finally got through to me, and uh... I accepted her offer. <laughs> so I'm hoping maybe I can see you there too, friend. I highly doubt it. Who knows? Who knows? Things could change in the future. Wink, wink. All right. Dead now people. I want to activate, want to activate Raptor and then fly back to Chicago. Alrighty, it's quite a long way. You're probably gonna have to sit in the ocean again, like rest. But you'll make it eventually. <laughs> nice reference, Colin. And yeah, so that's the end of that, Roy. You look. Oh, at Colin, you're disgusting. You're a horrible... I just got it. You're disgusting. Oh, no. That's a reference. That's a reference to something, but if you think it means something else... I'll talk, I'm to, you when, John, I'll talk to you when you're older. I'll You'll talk you to me older. when I'm older? 
I'll, uh, I'll explain it to you when you're older. When is older? <laughs> after this game. Ah, oh, okay. I'll be 35 then. So, um, Roy, you watch Anthony soar up into the air. He tells you about the school. You're like, that's never going to happen. Wink, wink. And, um, yeah, he flies off. And you're kind of left here to relax. The portal's still open. The soldiers are making their way in. And you begin to head back with the group. Yes. So, excuse me. We now have a bit of a time skip. It's roughly been a week. Roughly been a week. Time has gone by and all that stuff. And... You've, you were approached by a few of your commanding officers and said that a promotion ceremony is going to be held for some of the soldiers recently. Because on the recent mission and other missions that you were part of, some people did some pretty crazy stuff and the U.S. is like they want to commend them. It helps keep morality going. It, it helps when they see a man split another man in half and their intestines fall out. It helps. So, Roy, you know that they went up to you and talked to you and said that they want to give you a promotion as well. Good. Yeah, they feel you deserve it. Which is kind of the only affection you really receive. Like, the Soviet savior really, li- really liked you, and same with Communist Charles, but they're both abnormals. They got powers and all that stuff. They're enhanced individuals. But a lot of people at the camp aren't crazy about you, so it's kind of nice to get the recognition, but you're not sure how long that's going to last. So, about a week passes, (laughs) and you eventually wake up. It's 5.30 a.m. Yeah, and um, you hear the typical sergeant horns just... Or whatever the sound is. It's one of them. (gasps) Oh, God. (laughs) So that's the noise. Uh, That's the (laughs) noise everyone hears. It's just some parry yelling into the speaker. No, they just grab like a chicken. They grab a boom (laughs) mic and they just squeeze its neck. And it it just goes... (laughs) It's a beautiful morning, fellas. Let's wake up. And, yeah, you wake up. Like I said, it's been about a week. The promotion ceremony is today. It's going to be at 8 a.m. And um, it's going to be a relatively normal party. It's just going to be probably some training exercises, going over some strategies for the invasion of Ukraine and all that, pushing forward. But, um, yeah, it's going to be an exciting and a bit of a different day. And... You kind of wake up, your face is all tired, you're groggy, but I want you to roll me an awareness check. Okay, I roll. You roll it well, yes, very good. 15 plus 6 was my awareness. Hold on. 15 plus 6? Yes. Okay. My my awareness is 6. The red rooster! (laughs) Yes, it is the red rooster. That is what is screeching through the microphone every morning. So, so come, Brad. It is time for you to wake up. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what'd you get for awareness? So, I have six awareness plus my the fifteen that I rolled. Okay, uh, you wake up and you notice pretty quickly on the nightstand next to you. You are in the sector of the peculiarity division. Uh, It's basically people with one power for abnormals, all that stuff. And, yeah, you're just kind of hanging out here. You're shoved off in a corner. There aren't too many people for this division. So you kind of have a bit of room to yourself. And you look to your nightstand, and there is a massive book. It's ancient. It's old. It looks like it's kind of falling apart in a few places. And it looks stained as well. And written in a beautiful, fancy golden text, it is labeled The Big Book of Oogity Boogity. And 
there is a picture of a few skulls and stuff like that on the front cover. And there's a note attached to it. A little sticky note. Do you want to read it? Yes, I will. It says, thought you might need this, sweetheart. Feel free to add it. How? Feel free to add to it however you want. And there's a little heart drawn. What the hell? And it says, for Roy, Zeroth. What in fucking turnation? <laughs> I don't know. How does Roy react to getting this very strange book? I'm just going to kind of look around and I guess just add it to my inventory. Okay. Do you want to carry it with you? Because it's freaking massive. Or would you rather like hide that under your bed? Oh yeah, I'll hide under the mattress. <laughs> it's safe there. You're confused, but it's interesting. I'm going to keep the sticky note on me though. All right. You just kind of put the sticky note in your pocket. Uh, the sergeant looks to, uh, looks to you while he starts banging on the door. It's like, did you all not hear the signal? Everyone out of your rooms, prepare! And, um, yeah, so you kind of got that. You got the new fancy book. And you begin to get ready for the morning. You get dressed in your garb. And you stand outside of your barracks area, I guess is what it's called, a barracks, yeah. yeah. You stand outside your barracks. Um, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, my throat. And it's a relatively normal, uh, like I said, you guys are just doing some training, you're running around the camp uh, about four times or whatever, no breaks or whatever a military camp does. You train a little bit, just kind of do some push-ups, sit-ups. This is what John thinks a military camp is. And um, you uh, do go over a little bit of the Ukrainian plans. They say they'll talk more about it after the ceremony. But it's nearing 8. They say, everyone, you know, get dressed, um, get ready and all that. And we're going to meet in the air hangar. And so, Roy, you get dressed, you get set up, you look nice, it's fun, it's fancy, uh, you're in your beautiful military garb, and yeah. you begin to make your way to the hangar, my friend. Okay. So, you go over, uh, you sit down at your chair, there's tons and tons of people, it looks like an ocean of soldiers, and you have the Soviet flag. Just kind of hanging up on the stage, and they all say, Now, everyone, would you care to join us in singing the national anthem? <laughs> they all stand up and they all begin to sigh out. And Roy, do you join them? Of course, <laughs> of course, yes. Do you take off your hat and put it over your heart? Yeah. You maybe shed a few tears. You love your national anthem. It's truly beautiful. And there you are, my friend. You all sit back down. And then they begin to call up people. They say what their duties were, what they did to earn this um, reward and promotion. And they basically sit back down, all that stuff. It kind of looks like graduation, except there's more to it. And nowhere Except near as long. Wearing fucking dresses. Yes. Yes. And it's not hot as shit. <sighs> this is very true. So, um, I like that gift someone posted. It was funny. It's distracting me now. <laughs> um, so, you're kind of all getting your medals, all that stuff. And then eventually, since your last name starts with Z, you take a little while. But eventually, they call you up. And then they go, Roy Zeroth. And do you rise? Of course. I just I just like to make sure. Just make sure. And then a meteor comes. Um, you begin to walk out to the mid-stage. You begin to walk forward. And you walk with pride. A lot of people look to you. You do a world awareness check. Okay. Oh, shit. 
<laughs> Drop the die as I tried to pick it up, and I got it. You failed! <laughs> That's what we call a big oof. Tell me what you get once you got it. Not one. Oh, okay. So you can't make out anything they're saying in the slightest. But you Makes do... Sense. There's a lot of people talking. Yeah, there there are some people murmuring and talking. You hear snickering as you're walking by and all that stuff. You're trying to pay them no mind and all that. But there, there are people kind of, you know, probably making fun of you. And you know why. It's it's because you're an abnormal. It's because you got a peculiarity. You're used to this. Not a lot of the camp likes you, but it's the only place you've really been able to call home. So, you walk up to the stage. You take the medal. They say, for your brave actions, all that stuff, this is why you have this medal, blah, blah, blah. The USSR thanks you. They salute you. And they have you sit back down. You salute back. And you sit back down. You hear snickering and murmuring once more as you pass by. And eventually they give a few more meetings and it's over. Caught up. Congratulations, Roy Zeroth. You are promoted to Specialist Roy Zeroth of the Peculiarity Division. Congratulations, sir. I finally feel like I've done something with my life. <laughs> that's so sad. That's that's so sad. <laughs> There's like no other way to put it. That's just really sad. <laughs> Name one other time I've done anything successful. And, oh, there was that one time you, uh... Uh... Well, there was that other time you... Didn't you do that what uh, uh, huh. Huh. <laughs> So Alan He's comforted. You spend the rest of your day training. They're kind of telling you what your specialist duties are. I don't know what it is, but they know what it is, so they're gonna say that they know what it is and tell you so that way you now know what it is. Okay, okay, okay. The transferring okay. of words from mouth to ear. Good. And so you kind of have this new position. You're flexing it a little bit. You're having fun. And they go over the Ukrainian war plans. It looks like you guys are going to move in again soon. Um, it's been very... It's been a very difficult battle because the UN has been desperately trying to, like, stop you guys and many other nations... But nobody has attacked you guys because of the Soviet savior and communist Charles. They know and communist the Charles. And the Sam turret. And the Sam <laughs> They know that if they were to launch nuclear warheads at you, they could. communist Charles could just open up a portal, catch them, and that portal could open up above the United States or wherever. That is beautiful. So, like, they literally cannot touch you. Them. Kim Jong-un is so jealous. He has wet dreams of Communist Charles. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and you're, you're more or less defended by these enhanced individuals. So it's a little hard to attack you. And they're trying to do everything they can. So, with this, Roy, the day goes by pretty well. You get a lot of training in, you got a lot of plans in, you kind of figure out what you guys are going to do. And then with that, you are going to begin to make your way back to your barracks. Okay. Now, you do have a tiny bit of time to kill personally before you usually take a fresh and then head to bed. So what do you want to do? Do you want to read that book? Do you want to just chillax before you get yeah, set? I'm going to take a look at the book. Okay. You pull it out, and it opens up. And on the first page, it says, Big Book of Oogity Boogity, written, oh, excuse me, written by Ezra. You don't know what an Ezra is, but, you know, 
It must have been the person that gave you this. So you flip through the pages and you see all these pictures of these strange, terrifying apparitions, ghosts, demons, monsters, and summoning rituals. So with all this stuff, by the looks of it, this is like a book on how you can summon demons and crazy stuff. It's like the Necronomicon, but somehow more terrifying. But with a fun Necronomicon's name. Necronomicon's a bitch! Oh. Yeah, so you go reading through this. You see a strange creature, and it looks like a little white rabbit, but eventually, if it draws enough power, it will spread mantis legs and a bunch oh of crazy stuff. Mr. We Hans. remember this one. <laughs> oh, from the darkest timeline, we remember this pretty boy. So, Roy, you spent some time reading. I want you to roll an intellect check. Let's see how much information you can pull. All right, that's going to have to be hard 11 for me there, dog. Hard 11? That's fine. You pull out a decent amount of information. It's not that bad. And, yeah, yeah, you kind of understand a little bit of how this book works. Just a little bit. So, you kind of spend your time just reading up on it, checking it out, all that stuff. And eventually you're like, all right, I should probably, like, get in the shower and then go to bed. So do you want to do that? Yes. Okay. You kind of hang up your clothes, all that stuff. You grab your towel, and you begin to make your way to the shower bath bathhouse. You make your way in, and roll me an awareness check. Oh, oh I'm so tired for some reason. I don't know what the hell happened. I disconnected. Ah! Did you hear what I asked? No, not at all. <gasps> Big sad. That's okay. Um, I wanted you to roll me a awareness check, my good sir. Roll. 14. Okay, 14. So, with a 14, you're kind of walking uh, to this area. And all of a sudden, you kind of hear the murmurs of some other people. And... With that, I'll say you can hear it. I'll say that you can clue in and hear this. I'm listening to words. Yes. I'm just trying to yeah, make I... sure I figure out what they're saying. I'm trying to juggle a few things. So you kind of hear them going like, that promotion ceremony is a bunch of bullshit, right? Absolutely! Yeah, man. It was like... Come on, why, why, why do we even care about this stuff? Just bring me to the fight. That's what I'm good at. And then you hear them kind of murmuring a little bit more, and then they go, did you hear about that Roy Zeroth guy? Why does he deserve a medal more than us? Uh, we were on that field. We were doing stuff. We were working with the Savior. Where's our medal? Roy, do you want to keep walking in? Yes. Okay. You walk inside. And they're just kind of, it's just three guys. They're just kind of sitting around. They're hanging out. And then they look to you and they go, well, 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 speak of the devil. Devil, pretend they are speaking in Russian accents. John, John cannot continue to do Russian accents. His voice needs to rest. It means you are weak, comrade. <gasps> Fine, then I will do accent. He goes to you and is all like, Oh, well, look at this. Speak of the devil. Who is Zeroth? How are you? I'm sure Says, that you care. Oh, you're a, you're a smart one, aren't you? No, I don't care. Not in the slightest. But I did want to know, how are you feeling that you got your new promotion? How are Nothing things? Changed. No. How so? I'm here to serve and nothing else. I'll kind of begin to surround you. It's all like, hey, what do you think we're doing too? Huh? What, what you, you do is none of my concern. Oh, but did you... It's, um... They, they kind of begin to surround you a little bit more. 
and they look like they're they look like they're looking for a fight you can kind of pick up on their body language what's going through roy's head right now pathetic <laughs> all right that works um yeah they're kind of going around you they're all like um they're more or less just kind of saying like how they feel like they should have gotten a medal as well. They should have gotten a promotion. They tell you that they were fighting um, along alongside you guys. They were fighting with the Soviet savior, and sure they're kind of continue comp- working hard. You'll get one. Hmm. Seems like. It seems like they're looking to take some anger out. And I'm I'm trying to like, I'm trying to do this in a natural way, trying to make sure that all this is coming out right. Because I'm trying to stay, stay true to your backstory. So the guys come up to you and Sorry, I'm just trying to look through my notes and make sure everything's going well. They more or less just disregard what you say. They don't really care. They seem a little too pissed off that you got recognized, and they think it's because you got a fancy power and they don't. They think they've got somewhat of a bias towards you and all that. And they begin to start to shove you, just kind of push you. Kind of going, going like you think you got... You think because you have a power, you're better than us? You think you got a power? Yes, because... I do think that. Oh! You hear that, boys? You hear that? Boy, Zeroth over here thinks he's better than us because he's got a strange little power. Ain't that neat? I didn't choose to have this power. And we didn't choose to be bo- born inferior to you guys. But look, here we are. Society's loving you, new abnormals, with all your strange, fancy powers. Maybe it's because we can do anything you can do two times as well. The guy begins to grit his teeth. He begins to clench his foot a bit, and he's like, Oh no, you did not just go there, man. And, let's see. All right. One more awareness check for, for me, buddy. What check? Awareness. Eleven. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you notice this guy is, like, about to punch you. Like, it looks like he was wanting to start something, but it looks like he might actually start something. And he looks to you and goes, you know, I've been meaning to do this to you freaks of nature for a long time. And he's going to take a So, I want you, my friend, to roll initiative. Roll d20 and tell me what you got. 17. Okay. I shall roll for them, just as a group. Oh, a one! Why? Ugh. My minions are pathetic. All right, Al, what do you want to do? You see this guy's beginning to throw a punch at you. I'm going to block it with a chain and throw him to the ground. Okay. Roll a willpower check. Nat 18. Okay, and roll a coordination check. All right, let me see what my coordination is. I believe it is six. Six. Okay. But I'd just like to make sure <laughs> coordination is six, so that's that's a ten. Already a ten. So with a ten, you are well. I'll check. Be sure to check. Oh, all right. Well, I guess I'm glad I checked. Yeah, you're able to kind of wrap his fist around with chains, and you kind of bring him to the ground. It just goes ah. Boys, get him! And they begin to want to punch your face as well. 
they begin to want to punch my face as well. Yes. They want to punch your head. In You're in a building, correct? Yes, you are in a building. You're in a wet slipper building as well. What because it's the kind shower of ceiling does it have? Oh, it's like a tile ceiling. Dang. What, what were you thinking on doing? Are there any noticeable beams above me? Yes, yes, there are beams. All right, then I know what I want to do. Oh, well, we can do that on your turn. Two guys are going to roll to hit you. I want you to roll a coordination check. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting hit. That That's a three. Okay, so one will hit you. Roll again. Yes, my minions are doing good. 17 net. Well, again, he tied. 18 net. Damn it. So one rushes at you, throws a punch, but the other one just uppercuts you. And you are... Gonna take two points of damage. So, right, so yeah, you I'm get cracked. I healed from my last encounter. Yes, you are fully healed from your last encounter. All right, so week. I'm still at ten health. Okay, that simplifies things. So, my friend, it is your turn. What would you like to All do? All right, I'm just gonna chain the beam on the ceiling and crawl along the ceiling. Crawl along the ceiling. So that will require quite a strength check. And we're going to see if the military paid off. So roll me a strength 25. check. 25. 25. Okay. You're able to crawl up the chain and kind of hold. Now, uh, is that your turn? Yeah. Okay. Just chill on the ceiling. Just making sure. One of the guys is going to try and grab your chain. So I'm going to roll for him. Okay. He is able to climb up and he's going to try and grab you and drag you back to the ground using his body weight. So I would like you to roll basically a strength check at disadvantage because you're trying to hold on to the. No, come back, die. Another man. I have a weight. small table. Small table. All right, my lowest one was ten. Okay, he beats you. He grabs you and he sends you to the ground. So you are now on the ground. You're not going to take environmental damage though. So let's just take a look, see, because it wasn't that far of a fall. So. That guy grabbed you, brought you to the ground. The other two are going to try and just like face with their fists. I believe scientists refer to that as punching. <laughs> and now, one of them fails again. So he just kind of <laughs> rushes forward. He's like, I got the boss! And he just kind of slams his head into the wall and just, oh! I bet this is not the first time he hit his head in his life. He probably ate paint chips when he was younger. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> the other one is gonna try and, like, pound your chest, but with his foot. He's gonna, like, try and step on you. Right, oh, okay. Focus. So, since you're flat on the ground, you can't dodge this. So, yeah, he got a 19. So he's going to roll a d4 for damage. You take four points of damage. And he, like, slams on your chest. It, 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 it hurts, man. It hurts. It's your turn again. What do you want to do? All right. I'm going to fucking... Oh, no, let me think. Is he still standing over me? Yes, he is. All right, I'm going to kick him in the nuts. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> All right, roll coordinate, roll prowess. Use prowess to aim that foot for his balls. 
Can you do it? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. All right, I dropped my phone and my mic disconnected. Yeah. All right, so what am I rolling? You are rolling prowess. Prowess. Let me check with my message. What it yes, is. roll a d20 and oh, add your prowess. Oh, God, my prowess is seven. Oh, no! This That's poor 21. guy's balls! This That's poor 21. guy's balls! <laughs> you raise your God. foot in the air and you kick. You felt you you thought you felt you made impact, and then you're like, "Hey, I I don't feel anything." <laughs> and then you look. It's because his balls are no longer there. <laughs> they're um, they're mush, <laughs> like <laughs> soup. Uh, so he's never having kids, and he just closes his legs, looks at you, and goes, "Oh," <laughs> just falls to the ground. He's passed out. You think you see red forming at the pants? So like, yeah, yeah. Um, that's that. That was brutal. Uh, okay, so he's down. <laughs> he's gonna be down for a long time. The other guy made a dent in the wall with his head. <laughs> Don't worry, boss. I'll get next time. And he's just like you idiots. He's one man! And he looks down at you, because it's his turn, and he's going to go, uh, ooh, I wrote a few lines for him to say, because why not? So let, let's pick from my treasure trove. Humans are frightened by what... No, wrong one. Um, you and I are not so different. No, wrong one. <laughs> Pulling out all the villain cliches. <laughs> let's see. Um, I got your reference, Colin. Thank you. Uh, he kind of go. He just kind of screams at you, like in a fit of rage. Like abnormals are a lesser race. You guys fucking suck. Look at this. You can't even take on us. What happened to that? I can do everything better than you by ten times, huh? Look who's on the Bulls ground. Are bleeding. Not one guy rammed his head. The other one's balls are bleeding. This guy's still standing, so he feels he. Can... Oh. I know that's what I said to him. I said his balls are bleeding from. No, that's beside head. the point. <laughs> that's beside the point. I'm still standing, and he just kind of screams at you. You'll never be anything more than a freak of nature. You think people will will see you as anything more than that, huh? You're a hell spawn. And he's going to try and punch you in the throat. So, at this point, you've kind of recovered from your fall. You can coordination to dodge. All right. Oh, shit. Fuck. Dice, come back. Because he totally dropping. is Anthony. Yeah, I got a nat 20. Uh, oh. <laughs> okay. So, he slams his fist into the cement. You just got to shift your head to the side. He just raises it up and goes, Ah! Oh my god! Oh, I think I cracked my nails! Ah! Yeah, I think that cement's ten times stronger than you. You shut up! Uh, it's your turn, Anthony. You can do- or, boy, you can do something. Alright. So I'm- I'm stood up now? Yes! Alright. Tim, what the hell is that? Punch Jeff? him straight in the gut. You're gonna punch him in the gut? All right, what yeah. prowess? My lucky seven prowess. No, fuck, thanks, come back. I do, I have this tiny little table. All right, I got a 14. Yeah. All right, you beat him. You punch him in the gut, just... Whoop, boom, and he just goes... Oh, oh, and he just flies back. I'm gonna roll coordination. All right, nat 20. He doesn't slip on the water in the shower. He stands up. He just kind of, like, rubs his tum tum. And he's like, Oh, that's it! And he rushes forward. And he's gonna try and take you to the ground again. But, like, slam you for damage. So, roll coordination to dodge. Can I just simply, like, hold my arm out when I dodge? And just absolutely hit him in the throat with it. Just clothesline him. You can try, but you're going to have to roll coordination. Alright, I did. 
What'd you get? Let me hold on. I gotta. I believe my coordination is five. I just want to make sure. Don't want to get anything wrong. No coordination is six. That's nineteen. Okay. okay. And nineteen. All right. So with a twenty-three, he dodges oh, out of the oh. way of your arm. He comes charging at you. Roll me coordination. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. And with a twenty-five. Fucking hell. Yeah, this guy rolled good twice. He strikes oh. you in the balls. He's like, that's for my friend, you freak. It feels good. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, that's what I mean. <laughs> you guys are terrifying. No, I didn't. Uh, obviously didn't actually say that. That's fuck. Oh, okay. Tim, don't worry. It has been almost a month since it's the last game. But that's okay. Things are better now. Things are okay. And Alan got punched in the nuts. <laughs> so, Alan... Luckily for me, I've got balls of steel. Well, they're turning into balls of mush. <laughs> you take one point of damage, and you're going to be prone for... A... You drop to your knees and just go... Oh! Here, Roy, give us a reaction as to how react to get punched in the balls. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! Oh, this, damn. This is a shitty Roblox oof. Oof! Oh. <laughs> Tim waiting for his game. <laughs> Don't worry, it's coming, Tim. Shut up, mortal. You will wait for your time. <gasps> and with that... Uh, yeah, Alan, you kind of just drop to your knees. Just, ah! And, uh, that was his turn. You're going to spend your turn recuperating. It's feeling slightly better, but now it's back to his turn, and he's going to grab you by the shirt, and he's going to try and pound your face in. So, Alan, roll coordination at disadvantage. Because you're um, on your knees, and you're still rating from your ball punch. Alright, I rolled a 17 and an 18. God damn this guy. <laughs> what did he roll? 14. So, he raises his fist, and he's about to punch you, but you dodge out of the way, and then I want you to roll an awareness check. Awareness? Yes! Alright. Awareness is 6. Six plus seven is thirteen. Wow! I just saw what <laughs> I just saw what Anthony said. God, you savages! <laughs> wow! How rude! So, what did you get, my friend? Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. Okay. This works. So. Good. You're looking around, and then you hear the footsteps of someone rushing in. And then, you see a bit of a slightly heftier man. He's a little bit larger than you guys. He's got a buzz cut, like most. And he rushes in. You see his arms are, like, bulked up. And they're just radiating with cosmic energy. And it looks like stars are practically coming out of it. And he rushes forward, and he does a punch to your face. To my face? Oh, no, not your face. Excuse me. I was like, I, I thought I knew who this was. This isn't at all. No, no, no. No, you know who this is. So, uh... He rushes forward and he punches the guy in the face that's... Ah! And he strikes him. And this guy drops to the ground, taking six damage to his pretty face. Jesus shit. He just goes... Uh -huh. And this guy lowers his bulk up power, wink, and he just kind of looks to you 
at Roy is like, hey, you okay, man? Yeah, thank you. Damn assholes. Hey, you, uh, your balls look like hell. <laughs> this is looking look down. Down. It looks like You're there's a boot them shy. <laughs> He's just like, sorry, sorry. It just looks like they're a boot print now. <laughs> But he helps you up, and he's all like, Hey, uh, my name's Danny. Well, thank you, Danny. My name's Roy. Yeah, I saw you at the promotion. Uh, congrats on that. Thank you. Uh, let's, uh, let's get out of here. Yeah, let's. Yeah. Oh, by the way, this isn't Danny the Chili Man. I, I want to stress this now. This is not Danny, Danny the, the Chili Danny the fucking who? Danny the Chili Man. I have no idea who that is. <gasps> I'll have to show you soon. I love Danny the Chili Man. He's so good. Everybody loves Danny, right, folks? <laughs> I'll take that. Oh, oh, oh. Dance. Oh, dear. They got the John Dance going. <clears throat> but, my friends. Um, let's see. So, Danny kind of takes you aside. You guys kind of leave the shower area. You're like, you know what? I don't need to shower. It's fine. Oh, let me just stand. And he takes you back to his barracks. He sits you down, and he's all like, hey, can I get you anything? Uh, some cigarettes would be nice. <laughs> he's like, yeah, I don't got those, Chief. It's too risky carrying them in here. And he looks around and he's like, I mean, I got water. Is that That'll good? Work. All right, all right, awesome. Uh, he just kind of brings over some water. And he's like, okay, um, hey, it's, uh, sorry, it's just really cool to see you, man. I've seen you in action, and uh, it's, it's awesome. Oh, you have? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I I went on you. Uh, I went with you on a couple missions. It was it was pretty cool. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't notice you. Nah, uh, I, I didn't expect you to. Um, fair amount of fair amount of these officers, they don't look into us, but you know that's that's fair. Yeah, we're just we're just basic soldiers, but that's okay. Um, yeah. Uh, well, what was that whole fight about, if you don't mind me asking? Um, they were pissy that I got ranked up and they didn't. Thought it was because I had a power. That's, like, messed so up. <laughs> I indulged them and fucking called them out. You know what? Good. Good. There are too many people here that just don't like us because we got a power. I, I've seen people talk behind your back. When I was sitting at the ceremony, I heard a lot of people snickering and laughing at you as you walked by. It's not fair, man. It's not fair. No, it is not. Hey, um... Well... If you don't mind me asking, what made you want to join the military? I know, a bit sudden, but i always kind of been uh... curious. I had no choice. Oh? I was abandoned by my mother here. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to pry. No, you're fine. I don't know where she was. Or my father. Oh. Yeah. I, uh, I'm kind of in the same boat as you. My parents didn't really want me, and... They didn't really want to deal with bringing me to an orphanage and all that stuff. They didn't care for the hassle. So they just sent me away. They didn't like that I had a power either. So It's too many people like that. Yeah, it's... Uh, I guess people just aren't really willing to accept that the world is changing. And that... Especially if it's their own kid. Yeah, I showed signs when I was really young. People and they 
took one look and just really didn't want me. So I may do with it. It's whatever. But um, it's nice to know that I'm not the only one in that boat. You just got to roll with the shit hand you were dealt. <laughs> yeah. What keeps you in this camp, man? I've seen the people treat you terribly. Why, why haven't you gone anywhere else? I have nowhere else to go. Yeah. I've got nothing and no one. Same here. I've uh, just kind of been living here, you know, ever since I was really young. Well, honestly, you're the first person I've kind of ever really talked to. So, hey, thanks for that. And thank you for saving my balls. <laughs> you're welcome. Do they still have a boot print in them? <laughs> <Just so long. laughs> Stop looking at my balls. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, man. Tim, what the hell is with this SpongeBob just meme crap that you're just rapidly throwing in? <laughs> Uh, the fucking heresy. What the heresy is going on? But yeah, he, um... <laughs> Alright, fair answer. So, basically just kind of goes as like... So, I guess you're kind of at least closer to one of my commanding officers. You're a specialist now, right? I'm just kind uh, of a private. True. Hey, that's fun. Um... I hope I can see you out on the battlefield more and all that. I'll keep an eye out for you. Yeah. Hey, you want to be friends? Yeah. <laughs> he just kind of says it almost like how a child does when they ask, like in uh, elementary. Hey. Yeah. Oh, oh, really? I actually didn't expect that to work. <laughs> uh, th thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I don't really. Like I said, I don't really have anyone else. But, uh, yeah, maybe we can, uh, you know, hang out yeah, sometime if we other, ever have man. Time. Yeah, you can have someone. Patsy on the back. He's like, um, I'll let you head to sleep, man. I, I won't keep up with your time uh, anymore. Right. Hey, have a good night, man. You too, Private. Smiles. And you begin to head to bed. Roy, that was the first time anyone in this camp, or rather really anyone in your life, has kind of shown you real kindness. What it's, is it? uh... Oh, one second, my friend. Pause. Oh, apparently it's a knock at the door. Fuck. So, I'm back. Hello. And, um, yeah. So, Roy, you begin to rest for the night. And Actually, I want to look more at the book. You want to look more at the book? Okay. Yes. Uh, it's mainly just the same stuff. Uh, you're, do you want to just read the book into the night? Yeah. Okay. You begin to do that. Eventually, it becomes pretty late for you, and then you kind of shut it and just put it away. You learn that this is a very strange oogity book with a hint of boogity. Oh, no. Boogity, boogity. <laughs> Not oogity and boogity. Yes, it is both of them. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. No. We're going to have a little bit of a montage because that is the best way to establish friendship and character development. Heck it's yeah. It's a montage. It's a montage. Well, this montage just kind of includes you and Danny beginning to training together. You guys talk to one another. And it kind of goes on for a little bit of time. You guys actually really connect really fast because you're the first friends that either one of you have had. You begin to learn more about Danny. You figure out where he came from. It's fun. It's nice. And you're hanging out with him. You're going over more of the Ukrainian war strategies and plans and all that crap. And eventually, um, eventually you guys are just like, you've really connected. And you can feel that, my dude. You can feel that in your heart. What's a heart? In your soul. 
What's that? In your meat body. Oh. <laughs> the red pinkish thumpy thing in your chest. Oh, that thing. Oh, that, yeah, I don't... Yes, yes, it is your meat toboggan. My meat toboggan. <laughs> meat bicycle. Meat bicycle. <laughs> That's a reference. Oh, I'm sure it is. So, you and Danny are hanging out more. Like I said, it's nice, it's fun. And then one day, you have a pretty crazy training session. You guys... Holy shit, man. Yeah. You guys are doing your normal routine. You run around the camp and all that stuff for about a mile or whatever. It's good. It's nice. And you go over the strategies. You figure out what your part is going to be. You're ordering around some people. You kind of like your new power. It's nice. And eventually, as this continues forward and all that, uh, you just kind of get to an Peculiarity division has you guys train with your powers. They help build up your resistance and stress because it's kind of like working out. You can only use your power so much before you're out of breath and out of energy. So that's kind of what you try and do. So you're training and all that stuff. And Danny is with you. And he's kind of, you see him just charging up, like, his cosmic arms and all that stuff. He's punching them forward. He's looking to you. He's like, huh, huh. I don't know how you have so so much of a resistance, man, to this. I guess I was just born with it. Yeah. Well, kudos for you. Oh, Brad. You'll get he's... there eventually. Hey, thanks, man. He's trying. And the camera pans away from you guys, and uh, and you guys are trained, and you're having focus, and then it pans to those three dickweeds that beat you up. They're kind of overseeing you guys, hanging out, hanging up against the flagpole, and the one leader's like, look at that asshat, acting like nothing's different and all that stuff. Like, our fight was meaningless. It's because it was. <laughs> He's like, <sighs> kicked me in my nuts, too. <laughs> Says the other guy. It's like, I don't have them anymore. I know you don't. I, I keep them in the jar. <laughs> they had to surgically remove them because there was no point in keeping them on. <laughs> I have them in this. And he holds up the jar. He, jang he dangles them around. It's like, okay, that, that's enough. That's enough. You you put that away. The other guy's like, well, boss, maybe we could. Maybe we could get revenge. And he's like, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, I'm going to be real. I forgot your name. Ibima. What? Ibima. That's not a fucking name. That's a okay. noise. <laughs> he just kind of looked at me. He's like. All right, so Bimbapi. <laughs> Bimbutu. Bimbubu. He just kind of looks around. He's like, you know something? He was saying he can do anything better than we can. And apparently he proved it with your nuts. Yeah. Don't bring that up again. <laughs> <laughs> At least his are still intact. <laughs> apparently my nuts are stronger than yours, too. <laughs> The guy looks around and he's kind of like, you know what? Let's put them to the test. My Let's nuts? see if they really are stronger. And he looks around and he finds a crate of just weapon supplies. He finds a grenade. He's like, whoa, whoa, what are you doing? What are you doing? Come on. They got powers. We'll be able to survive it. Come on. Let's give them a fun little scare. Soviets like that, right? It's like, I don't know, man. Seems a bit risky. Come on. Like I said. They're apparently better than us in every way. Let's try it out, huh? And with this, <laughs> Roy dies in his origin story, yes. He grabs the grenade, he pulls the pin, and he screams, Active grenade! And he rolls it forward. Uh, Roy, 
roll me an awareness check so that way you can find where. Sixteen. Okay. You see it instantly. I'm gonna roll for Danny. Oh, poor Danny. And um he's he's gonna be a bit delayed. You hear this, everyone just turns and looks and watches their grenade just bounce next to you guys. Roy it lands practically next to your foot. You have a split second to react. What do you wanna do? Do you wanna Roy Pony away? Uh yeah, I'm going to yell grenade and Roy Pony away. You yell grenade as well. You Roy Pony away. Just give me give me a snort, would you? <laughs> <laughs> I love that noise. <laughs> and uh, you Roy Pony, you Roy Pony out of there. And uh, let's roll for the rest of the crowd. Oh! Well, just about everyone makes it out. But Danny would looks have to laughed it. if they all died. They, they got close. <laughs> oh. <laughs> In fact, a few might actually fail. So Danny looks to the grenade a little too late. He begins to bulk up his arms to try and like push himself out of there. Because you don't know the extent of his powers. He might be able to like blast himself out like Bakugo from My Hero. I know Roy doesn't get that, but the rest do. And he begins oh, yeah. to charge up his power. Oh dear. Check for the grenade. Oh dear. And the grenade goes off. And Danny does not visibly make it out in time. The grenade blows. <laughs> the smoke erupts and soars into the air. Fire is there, and you watch a shadowy figure rise up into the air and slam back on the ground. A few of the other kids and soldiers that were trying to train kind of get sent back, and they go flying. And, yeah, it's not good, is the best way to put it. They go flying back. You think you saw Danny rise into the air and land back. And the three assholes get shot in their foots by some of the guards. They drop to the ground. They put their hands behind their heads. And you hear them muttering, I, I didn't make, I didn't, I thought they could escape. And they're just like telling us, shut up, shut up. And they're trying to like lock them down. T Colin, that is the most sick joke I've ever heard. <laughs> You. For a second, he was rising phoenix. Lord have mercy. <laughs> that is twisted. <laughs> and I'm the dungeon master. <laughs> so, Roy, the explosion dies down. The fire begins to go away. And you see a blackened body not too far away from it. What do you want to do? Um, well, I'm going to go back in. Go back into the explosion yeah. area? Explosion's over. Yeah. It's gone now. Yeah. Go in. You go over. Roll me an awareness check. Twelve. Okay. You look at the surrounding area, and you see a charred blackened body. Missing an arm. Missing a foot. And it's Danny. Danny is lying there like an overcooked piece of bacon. Missing a few parts. Oh, he didn't tell me he was going to be tasty. Oh, gosh. <laughs> He's a sick monster. <laughs> and, yeah, you just kind of look at him and... Yeah, he dead. Like, if it wasn't evident, like, he dead. So, how does Roy react to this? The one person I kind of showed him kindness. Well, how does he react? I don't know. You don't know? Just, you should get I'm to know. I'm just gonna stand there. Yeah. 
stand there and not making a noise. For a minute, and I'm gonna turn to the boys. Yeah, you turn to the you boys. Fucking little cunts. <laughs> They're just like we didn't mean it. We thought you guys could escape. They're like telling them to shut up and all that. Guns to the back of their heads. So, Roy. Yes. If you spend your time just kind of taking a moment of silence for Danny, you will be in your room. You're in your room alone. Just kind of thinking to yourself, you remember seeing Danny's body flying up into the air. You remember seeing it crash down and all that. And you remember the charred smell, the look. It was disgusting and horrifying to look at. You're left to think. You've had an hour to reflect on on this, maybe a little bit more. The training exercise was closer to nighttime, so the sun is beginning to set. So, Roy, here's the big question for you. What exactly do you want to do? You know they moved Danny's body to the morgue. You know the three assholes are currently being locked up until the, well, until police can come and pick them up and send them to a more high-class prison. Or they're going to firing range them. You're not sure. You kind of don't care. What time is it? Oh, it is nearing nightfall. So, Good. like 6.45-ish. All right, well, I'm going to wait for it to get dark out. It gets pretty dark. It's around 8.25-ish uh, is when it's basically nighttime. Most people are beginning to turn in. All right. Well, what do you I'm want gonna, to do? I'm going to sneak to the morgue. Okay. Do you want to use your shadow step? Sneak step, yeah. Or silent oh. step, rather. Yeah. They don't hear you. Um... You eventually make it, huh, excuse me, to a large building kind of buried in the ground. You begin to fiddle with the door, and you're able to, well, it is locked. So, you know what? Roll me a coordination check for your finger. Let's see if you can pick the lock. I have giant blades that can cut through anything. Why well, don't just cut the door and knob off? Okay, that works. I didn't know if you wanted to go for or not. <laughs> okay, so you hack the door handle open, you just kind of push it open, and the door is open. There you go. Congratulations. And you begin to sneak down into the morgue. It's a white tiled area, it's very clean. The walls are made of cement, there are LED lightings above, and all that stuff. And you see your typical morgue area. There's a bunch of the little filing like cabinets, but with the bodies, all the names. What are you doing in here, bud? What are you looking for? Um, I'm going to look for Danny. You look around, roll me an awareness check. Because they are in alphabetical order. Okay. But this place is relatively big. What'd you get? I got a ton. Ten. Eventually, it takes a while, but you eventually find... And... What do you want to do? You find the case that has his body. I'm going to take his dog tags. I'm going to take him. Yeah. You grab his dog tags. Do you want to wear them around you? Yes. You throw them around your neck. You hoist up Danny. It's a little gross that he's on you, but he was your friend, so you try to... You close the case. You begin to make your way out, and you relatively shut the door. As you're beginning to walk out, you notice that it's snowing. And that this might help obscure things. And actually, I think I just figured out what... Oh, Mike. And Ellen, I think I just figured out what your present's going to be. Uh. I got a fun idea. But we'll get back to that. So. Yeah. You begin to... 
walk out with him. There aren't too many guards about. They're kind of in there. They're mainly looking around the perimeter to make sure there are no attacks. They're not really looking inside. And you're using your silent step, so they don't really notice you. So, what do you want to do, my friend? I'm going to jump the fence. You're going to jump the fence. You kind of have to throw Danny over first, so roll me a check. Shouldn't be. Hey, Jack! No, 20. Oh! <laughs> you know, I'm going to say you do this. Nat 20s are fun. You grab Danny, you hold him like a bride, and you do a quadruple backflip over the fence, and you land like a hero. And they Deadpool don't notice. Deadpool would you. be proud. Deadpool would be very proud. But you do notice, oh, oh, that is tough on the knees. Oh, how do the heroes do that? <laughs> and the answer is. They have padding on their knees, so that way they can do it. <laughs> I like to think they carry around padding on their knees, so that way they can land. It's just a go uh, uh, fucking hockey goalie padding. Yes. Shock absorbers. <laughs> yeah, um, you begin to walk out. It's a very thick woods that surrounds the camp, and you begin to walk forward. The snow crunches a bit under your feet. And um, the twigs begin to crack. But you're slowly walking with the remnants of your friend. And Roy, what do you want to do with Danny? I'm going to go into the woods and bury him. Okay. Roll me a strength check just to see how quickly you can create this grave. You'll be able to do it. I just want to see, you know, time efficiency. 14. Okay. It takes just a tiny bit. But you're able to dig him a nice grave. It's not shallow. It's a nice grave. Um, how do you want to lime in there? Do you want to do you want to like put a bunch of twigs at the bottom for him to rest on rocks? Do you want to just drop them in? What do you want to do? Because right now you're just gonna have a pit. Just throw them in. Yep. Drop them in. You begin to bury him. And roll me a two. Mistakes. A what? A, a strike check. To, okay. Fourteen. Fourteen. It takes about the same time, maybe a little bit quicker, because you're just kind of buried. And you look around, and you grab a few sticks together. You grab a little bit of string that you have. You tie it in like a cross. Just kind of stick it there in the ground. You look over his body. Do you want to say anything? Do you want to give a little eulogy to him personally? Like, do you want to do anything? I'm just going to remain silent. Give a moment of silence. A little tough, but you look over your once good friend. Once, your once only friend. And you sigh. But you think you hear something off in the distance. Something catches your beginning to it's your thing roll me <laughs> roll me an awareness check bud all right all right that's that's like eight an eight yeah okay that's fine it just takes a while you don't hear it at first but not until they're practically on your butt and you hear a few soldiers uh, kind of scream into each other but you can understand it they're going they're more or less going hang on let me prepare the accent hello hello where could Roy Zeroth be he must have taken the body the monarch was ready don't worry boss we will find him and you hear the crunching of snow as they loudly make their way through sticks breaking you think you hear the sounds of dogs <coughs> And they're barking up just a little bit. They mobilized fast. They have a few flashlights going on, but there's still a decent amount of distance between you and them. Roy, what do you want to do? Um, do you want to run? Yes. Okay. 
Uh, you can activate Silent Step. It will not fully help you in the snow because snow is just so loud and crunchy. Yeah, it has a lot more to do with weight. So it will minimize the sound a bit, but you still hear a bit of a. Call me fucking fat? Yes. <laughs> You're a fat boy. I'm thick. You're thick. Here's a big question I wanted to ask you. Did you take the book, uh, the big book of Oogity Boogity with you? No. No, you didn't. The only thing I have with me is my pistol. Okay. And Danny's dog tags. Yes. So, Roy, as you begin to run, I want you to roll me another awareness check. Because I know I gotta go back to camp. You gotta go back to camp? Yeah, I've got other stuff to grab. Alright, 16. Okay, 16. Um, you notice that you've kind of out... And you notice that they can't find you, and that you can probably circle around back to camp if you continue yes. on the path you're on. Alright, I'm gonna do that. Okay. You begin to run through, you're trying to be stealthy, they haven't found you. You continue to hear them say, Where is that little shit? I'm not a little shit, I'm a big shit. <laughs> I'm a big chunky shit. <laughs> yeah, you continue to walk around. Yeah, I know, I, I know, Colin. You can stop being hecking gay. I know, I know that footprints exist. And, um, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I didn't mean to do a man like that, but I had to. Uh, you begin to walk around the, the area, and you eventually make it to the camp. You see a bunch of soldiers beginning to make their way into the woods to try and look for you. So, my friend, you can sneak in relatively easily, and you are back in the camp. You're kind of hiding right. behind things. What do you want to do? Well, i got to get back to my barracks. Okay. Roll me a coordination check to sneak that. You get it, Beth. Uh, yes, boss. Oh, God, you guys suck. <laughs> <laughs> they got a two. Just get higher oh, okay. than a two. Yeah, I, I rolled a net nine. You're fine. <laughs> You're fine. Plus six coordination, so I, I did well better than them. Oh, yeah. So. That's, oh, no, Firefox. I didn't mean to click. Go away. Close tabs. So, you begin to run to your barracks, and you make it there. Everyone is relatively asleep, but it looks like the soldiers are beginning to wake people up to get people on the manhunt, though they haven't made it to your division yet. Good. So, you are here. What do you want to take? The big book of Oogie Boogie. My sniper rifle and my shotgun. Okay. You take your sniper rifle, you hook it on your back, you take your shotgun. Oh, wait, didn't you want to give that to Anthony? Didn't no. you originally give that to Anthony, the double barrel shotgun? No. Oh, okay. Just want to make sure. Okay. Uh, you you have both the weapons on you. You're going to be weighed down a little bit, though. and especially with the big book of Boogity Boogity. So if you want to be able to make it out with decent speed, then you're going to have to leave one of the guns behind. All right, I'm going to leave behind the shotgun then. Okay. You take the sniper. You have a decent amount of ammo with you. As you look under the bed, the book, you open it up, and it comes to your hand. <laughs> and you kind of freak out for a second. But it, like, levitated and moved up to your hand. Fuck. <laughs> and you watch it kind of glow and hiss. And it almost binds to your hand. You can let go and all that stuff. You're a book, not a snake. Quit hissing. <laughs> and you can try and stick that in one of your pockets. And I will do that. Yes, or just kind of like stick it in your pants. You can figure out a way. I so, don't know fucking something. You have your stuff. Oh god, session chat's going mad. Session chat's going mad. <laughs> and with that... You have your supplies. Is there anything else you would like to take? Because chances are you're never going to see the place again. 
I got my dog tags, Danny's dog tags, the yep. clothes on my back, a sniper rifle, pistol, big book. I'm good. Okay. You begin to sneak your way up. Roll me one more coordination check to get through. You got it. Should I roll at a disadvantage? Um, you know what? Your gun might be making a little bit of noise as you clack. You're a little bit of a bigger target. So you know what? I'm not going to say disadvantage, but roll a flat d20. No bonus. All right, 16. Okay. So you begin to sneak through the camp, and you eventually make it out. I'm just going to make sure. Yeah, you make it out. Another two. These guys are pathetic. <laughs> I will raise them to be stronger. So you make your way and all that stuff, and you're back in the woods. You kind of see where everyone is, but we're made aware. Yes. Awareness? Yes. All right. Oh, God. <laughs> Fucking awareness is six. No, ah! aware yes, awareness is six. All right, eight. Okay, well, it could be worse. Could have been a seven. <laughs> so... You're looking around, and you're like, all right, I'm pretty sure I know where they are. Let's run. Uh, we'll be an intellect check for you, good sir. All right. Seven. Seven. Five and two. <laughs> I love it. So you're thinking that if you head straight, you'll make it to a main road, and that main road leads to a small town nearby. You could perhaps hide in there. Maybe you could get a ride. You could try and figure out something. So you think you want to head to that? Does that sound like yes. a plan? Yes, okay. Alrighty. You begin to run through the woods. Uh, roll me willpower to continue your uh, silent step. Thirteen. Uh, Alrighty. Um, you still think it's work? Oh my god! Another two. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That's three twos in a row. Oh my god. John, oh why are god. these people so mortal? Because they're. John's going to start punching dice real soon. I mean, I don't do that. Now that we move on, you begin to run through the woods. You're making your way. I have multiple sets of dice. I just like using ones. Um, yeah, you begin to keep moving through the woods, and eventually, eventually, some people that you didn't notice are in the general area. That's much better, 13. Oh. And they notice you. They see you, and they kind of cry out, There he is! And the some flashlights begin to turn on. Roy, do you want a Roy pony out of? Yeah. You begin to book it. Give me another snarl. <laughs> <laughs> so I think terrifying. You enjoy this too much. I enjoy it way too much. God damn it, guys! What is with the session chat? Oh, all right. So you guys continue forward and or you continue forward. You run in, you're running, you're running. You see a few warning shots kind of being sent or they're just terrible shooters. Just probably <laughs> both. It's probably both. And um, they're just kind of, they're just getting like stuck in the snow and snow bits are just rising up into the air. If you hit the trees and the bark, you're kind of zigzagging. They're like, stop him. <laughs> They're trying to shoot at you. But eventually, Roy, you make it to the road. And the town was a lot closer than you thought. So you basically run towards the road and you see the town. Do you want to run into it? Yes. Okay. You begin to run into the town. It's a very simple one. It's very small. There's a few houses. The snow is really beginning to build up. You see a few cars, people walking by. Uh, they're a little frightened because they see or they hear um, <laughs> gunfire, and then they see this strange boy pony start charging out of the woods. <laughs> start freaking out. But you run past them, 
Oh, God. <laughs> and roll me an awareness check. This is mainly to see where you could hide, where you could go, if you could escape somewhere. Eleven. Eleven. That is fine. That's above a ten. Oh, you look God. around, and you see a large military-like truck. It's one of those trucks that carries uh, soldiers with, like, the covered back, except the covered back is gone, and it's just a tarp uh, covering a bunch of supplies. There's a larger, heftier man. He's just kind of walking through. He's swinging his keys in his hands. He opens up the door. He begins to climb in, and the truck begins to start up. You think if you can make it to that truck and hide in the back, they probably won't find you or even catch you. Cool. Do you want to jump to the truck? Fuck you. <laughs> You're Roy ponying over there. Terrifying. He's getting in the truck. He's starting it up. He hasn't even noticed. I'll just make sure. Oh, yeah, he doesn't notice you. Was it another two? No. <laughs> Was it a three? Maybe. <laughs> and, um, you basically leap into the back, be a coordination check to make sure you're nice and fast. Oh, no. John, fuck you. You gave me your curse. What'd you get? Fucking two. Ha! Okay, so, so you're stumbling eight. a little bit. So it's going to take a little bit to catch up with. But you still can't. You're just fumbling a lot. Roll me a strength check without your bonus to try and climb into the back safely. Fifteen. Okay. You kind of leap up into the back. Your leg skits a little bit, but you eventually get yourself up and hide yourself up. You look forward. Roll me an awareness check. Okay. Uh, 20? Yeah. Yes, 20. That's fine. You look and you see these soldiers running and they're just screaming and cursing in Russian. Like, God damn it, how could we have lost that little shit? Actually, sir, I believe he wants to be called the big shit. <laughs> <laughs> the dogs are barking. And Roy, congratulations, you escaped the camp. And you watch as the town slowly begins to fade and shrink in the distance as a misty snow snow uh, vision begins to blind them and you're left alone on the truck as it skits down the road you look around you give some time to reflect and do you want to go through some of this guy's stuff just kind of see what he has oh 100 percent. okay roll me an awareness check Seven plus six, thirteen. Yeah. Oh, Tim, we're nearing the end of the game. If you want to know for the recording, so um, you see a box that is labeled "random crap" in Russian. Don't don't at me. <laughs> and um, it's just kind of a normal cardboard box. It's taped shut. <laughs> They're posting box. Russian in the chat. <laughs> um. Do you want to open the box? Why wouldn't I? Okay, just make sure. You pull out your uh, sharp buckasaur like claws. You rip it open. You open it. And you look around. It's a bunch of like old family photos, some books, nothing of interest. And then something catches your eye. Something oddly mesmerizing. You see a small little rock. He has two googly eyes glued on him. He has a handlebar mustache on and a little red bow tie. And you see a little dog tag around him named Phil. What do you want to do, Roy? Of course I'm going to take Phil. <laughs> you take Phil. You hold him in the air. <laughs> and you look to him very excited. Like... You'll comfort me, right, Phil? Do you wear Phil's dog ties? No, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> so, Roy has Phil. Hooray. How do you feel, Roy? Another universe with Roy and Phil. <laughs> and we eventually cut. And you guys are just driving down. And a lot of time has passed. This is our last... No, no, this is our second to last big time cut. 
you have escaped the USSR. It's been roughly a month and a half. You've been jumping from vehicle to vehicle wherever you can, just kind of going as far away from that place as possible. You've been sneaking on boats, you've been sneaking on cars, you've been doing what you can, and eventually you found yourself as far away as you feel like you care to go. You're currently in the United Kingdom. You're in England, specifically. Oh god, not the fucking Brits. Oh, you're with the Brits. <laughs> and you've kind of just been living here. The Soviets really haven't found you. They haven't, as far as you know, they're not chasing you down, but you made it pretty far. So you're just kind of hanging out and all that stuff. And let me describe what life has been like for you. Roy, you're a man with a home. You got a home, my dude. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. Do you want to know what your home is? Yeah. It's a burned down restaurant. Yay! <laughs> there was a very famous restaurant in the 30s here in England, and it was very popular, but in the mid-70s, a kitchen accident happened, just something small, and they evacuated everyone, and the building burned down. But the government really hasn't cared to remodel it or remake it, because you're living in a relatively small town. It's nothing too bad. Um, so you just kind of inhabit the place on your own. There's a lot of graffiti. Squatters rights. <laughs> There's a bunch of stuff like that, and you've been living here. Now, Alan, you've kind of been going around stealing food when you can just to kind of survive. You've been doing, you've just basically been doing what you can in order to get by. It's not the life you've always wanted, but, you know, you're on your own again. And you're away from the Soviets. So, yeah. for now, things seem generally safe. You like to spend your time kind of walking through the streets surrounded by people. Even though you don't know them, it is kind of nice to be around just regular people. Don't You're going around at me. that don't throw grenades at you yet. And, um, <laughs> yeah. what do you look like exactly? Like... You're just in casual clothing now, right? Like, are you still in your Soviet military uniform? Because that probably wouldn't swing well. I mean, unless I've stolen clothes, then no. I'm probably still in my winter camo. Sure, you can steal clothes. I'm yeah, let's say you stole some size. clothes. <laughs> yeah, what you do? Uh, what do you look like? I never actually designed my clothes, so I just to say, you know, jeans and a shirt. Okay. Do you have a hoodie on? Anything like that? Yeah, I'll do a hoodie. Okay. You kind of keep your hoodie up, trying to keep your face concealed and all that stuff. You don't really want people to see you. You don't want anyone to go out and all that. And you're kind of walking around. It's nice. You're relaxing. You eventually, you hear people just talking with one another. They're going like, you hear two girls, around your age, actually, one of them cries out, Come on, Chloe, stop running! You know I struggle to keep up! And the other girl kind of says, she's dressed almost like a superhero, she's got like a cape going and all that, and she's like, Would you hurry it up, Angela? I can practically smell someone in need of rescuing. And you just kind of see the two friends hanging out and all that, and yes, that is a cameo of TJ's characters, Doug Dimadab. <laughs> And, uh, yeah. Doug Dimadab. Oh, my God! <laughs> Whenever I say Doug Dimadab, Anthony's the only one that has the right to pop it and scream it. <laughs> Congratulations. And, Roy, you kind of look to that, and you long for that relationship with someone. You long for that relationship with Danny. You, you kind of miss it all. Yeah, but he's dead. Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> But then, you get a pat on your shoulder, and you quickly look over, and you see an older man, he's like, You know, no matter what people may say, everyone deserves that special someone to keep them company, eh? <laughs> I'm old. And John Lee begins to walk off as he gives you a wink. So, there you go. You're kind of just left there. Left there thinking, would you guys stop talking in Russian? <laughs> Lord have mercy! 
<laughs> this trademark phrase, I'm old. Yes, very much so. So, Roy, you spend the day as normal. You're relaxing, thinking on maybe stealing some food, all that. When I want you to roll me an awareness check. Rolling. All right. I'm not going to bother adding my awareness. This is an S17. It's fine. You got it. Uh, um, you hear... You hear a young woman kind of cry out. She sounds around your age because her voice kind of cracks a little bit as she does it. Because <laughs> you guys are going f through puberty. This is a fun time. <laughs> and you hear a few larger, heftier guys just kind of yelling something towards her. So it's near your house. It's near the restaurant. It's kind of in the alleyways in between the buildings and all that stuff. Do you want to go check it out? Yeah. Okay. And do you want to sneak there or rush there? Yes. Ah, okay. Well, you begin to make your way over there and you take a look around the corner and I'm going to pull up her picture and I'm just going to describe from there. Alan, you probably know who this is. Yeah, I would certainly hope so. <laughs> it's Oprah! Yay! So, Yay. I'll post this in. So, you see a Goyle. She's got long blonde-ish hair. She's got actually a little bit of a halo kind of around her. It's faint. It's translucent, but it's there. She's got long pointed elven ears. She's got two white angelic wings. And she's got a bow just kind of on her back. And she's just kind of in some casual clothing and all that stuff. And yeah, she's just kind of like scooting away from these guys. She's getting caught by them. She's trying to duck and turn, but eventually they're like close to grabbing her and she's like screaming at just like someone help me and all that crap. You're your typical damsel in distress. Roy, what do you want to do? Um A girl that's not Valerie? <laughs> How is that possible? <laughs> She'll get her chance. Oh god. <laughs> Alright, uh what do you want to do, bud? Um I just assume I might still have my pistol on me. Yes, you do. Right, you have your sniper, right. too. All right. Well, Both have a silencer. Yeah, that sniper's not going to be super useful right here. But it could. <laughs> Go on, you yeah, do. Let, let me just ascend the nearby building. <laughs> no, just do it from the ground level. <laughs> By the time I get up to the building, she's already gone. Oh, shit. No, she's just lying there dead. <laughs> no, I'm going to sneak up behind him with a pistol. Okay. You roll me willpower to use your shadow step. Silent step. No, it's silent step. Thank you. Twelve. Okay. Seventeen. So, um, I'll roll for the other guy, too. What'd you get? Twelve. Okay, re-roll. I'm gonna have you re-roll. Because he tied with you. 18 net. Oh. Oh. Oh, these guys are good. Shit. So, the young woman, she looks to be about 15, around your age. Um, 14. 14, excuse me. It's either 14 or 15 with you guys, because... That's what age we were when we hopped into our first high school year. Um, she notices you, but she doesn't react. Her eyes are just bugging. One of them, with a natural 19, turns around. The other one, with a natural 20, turns around. Oh, and, they both, and they both look at you and they're like, Hey, kid, you better stay away from this one. This is our business. Well, you're near my house. So this is now my business. What's around? House? <laughs> you see that burnt piece of shit? I live there. Yeah, it's a very big piece of shit. Yes. <laughs> it's like you for harassing a small girl. Look, look, it's just a job, man. 
Personally, my morals don't, don't sign this up. Why is... I, mm, I will get to that later. <sighs> Beta session spam chat. All right. Um, so, yeah, they're just kind of like, look, man, we're giving you the chance to step back. He just kind of screams out, don't step back, please, God, help me. Listen, if your morals are really in check, then you should leave. Look, man, we have a job from our old man. Look, we're getting paid handsomely. And he told What's us... What's better, a job or making the right choice? Roll me charisma. Roll me charisma. 16. Okay. They both look to each other and they're just kind of like... How are we gonna how are we gonna tell the boss? Tell her what she are we got gonna away. Say? You couldn't find her. <sighs> or hell, tell her she got hit by a truck, I don't fucking care. so much <laughs> your life is so contagious oh thank you oh discord's update i'll do that later all right um so oh <laughs> uh, they just kind of look to, to you they look to each other like all right fine we'll be out of here you never saw us we never saw you deal who are you exactly and they just kind of run out Marissa, oh, I mean, mystery person, <laughs> is uh, just kind of lying on the ground, just like, <coughs> hey, th thanks, thank you. You're welcome. What the hell was that all about? Uh, just a few goons from my dad. I um, it, it, it's it's a long story. Your father? Uh, That's kind of fucked. Yeah, he um doesn't really like me, or my mom, or my grandparents, or my uncles, or my cousins, or my siblings, or frankly anyone I'm related. So um, yeah, uh, I I tried to run away, and uh, he sent people after me. Well, that that's really fucked. It, yeah, you're telling me. He uh, didn't like me because I had a peculiarity. You... Uh, well, I don't know what that's like. Yeah, she says looking up to you, kind of standing up, brushing herself off. Yeah. She walks up to you and she's like, thanks again. My name's Varessa. She holds out a My hand name. to shake. My name's Roy and I'll shake her hand. Okay. And then you hear a distant... Ah! <laughs> and, um, you see a... Is it a falcon? I, I, I don't know. Is it a falcon, a hawk, an eagle? I forget what she has. <laughs> oh, it's a hawk. Okay, just making... I was going to say falcon, just making sure. Yeah, you see a hawk beginning to soar above, and it flies oh, down. I don't remember. It's in our pin somewhere. Actually, wait, I think it's a falcon. Hang on, let me check. I think it is a falcon. Pretty sure it's a falcon? Yes, it's a falcon. Uh, ah. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, you see a falcon uh, begin to flutter down, and it lands on her shoulder. And she goes, oh, hi, Yevil. Good boy. And uh, she just kind of pets him. And she goes, um, yeah... Hey, um, I I'm sorry to inconvenience you in any way. No, you're completely fine. Um, I just kind of, sorry for that quick rant. I, um, I just don't really know what I'm going to do now. I'm kind of by myself. Um, my parents are hunting me down, probably. I don't have a home. I have to well, make do with that. You could always stay with me. She looks to you. 
a little confused. Do you where where do you yeah, live? In the burnt down restaurant right next to us. <laughs> she looks to it. And is like John's gonna kill me. Yes, yes, I will kill you, Anthony. Um yeah, she looks to the restaurant and she's kinda like are, are you sure? I wouldn't want to be a burden. The only thing that's a burden is not having literally anything to do all day. Um, okay. I, I don't really have much that I, you know, have. Just kind of me and Yevil and this bow. Well, that's fine. Do you, um... Did you say that you had a peculiarity? Or at least, did you imply that? Yeah. Okay, can I see what it is? Uh, I'll exalt my blades. Oh my god, that's terrifying. <laughs> she, like, takes a step back. But that's also, like, really cool. How did you... That's... Oh, that's awesome. Thank yeah. You. I, um... My, my peculiarity is not that cool. I can, um... I can charge up things like light and darkness in my bow, and I can kind of shoot them forward, though it only works with a bow for some reason. So I guess I'm a master archer. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I think it's a little lame, but I mean, hey, it's a power nonetheless. Um, do you mind if I check out the place? If you can find anything of interest, you can have it. <laughs> uh, she just kind of begins to walk over to your Jack burned a restaurant do you want to follow her oh yeah 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 so you two kind of begin to look around the place she's checking it out Roy what would your setup look like a uh, sleeping would... bag Okay. No, that's it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you have a sleeping bag. <laughs> you have burned wood. And that's it. <laughs> she looks around and she's like, this is, um, this is homey. Um, that's a word for it. Yeah. Um, Oh, thank you again for letting me stay. I just don't know where anywhere would be safe, you know, from my parents. They, well, uh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I'll keep you safe as long as I can. Hey, thanks. I, I know we just met, but thanks. It, it really means You're a welcome. lot. Like I kind of said, I n I've never really had any. As you hear that, it reminds you back to Danny. It reminds you back to Danny of hearing him say, I never. And kind of brings back some maybe positive, may maybe bad memories. Who knows? These memories play in the background. <laughs> we have your montage. <laughs> That's the music that's playing. Um, yeah, she looks around. She's like, yeah. Um, my parents kind of kept me in the basement. Like, what the fuck? Locked away. Because they didn't like me, like, at all. Yevil was the only one that kind of came. He would fly down to the window and he would try and bring me food every now and again. He was, that's I don't a, know why. He's a pretty awesome hawk. Or falcon. Yeah, he's really cool. I, uh... Yeah. No, he's really cool. He was the only one kind of looking out for me, so... Well, he just kind of sticks around. I don't know why he cared so much about me, but... It's nice. So. Roy... You yeah, two, you just be talking. You're making small talk, you're kind of discussing. 
You tell her that you can try and protect her. She can stay with you. You're a little quick to you were a little quick to offer, but you kind of realize that you're tired of being alone. You, you kind of just want someone there with you. You're tired of just kind of sleeping up here. Been talking to this fucking rock for months. You've been talking to the rock. <laughs> You've been talking to the rock for a month and a half. Every now and again, you think you hear it in, in your head going, Yes, I don't trust this one, Roy. Are you sure we should have her? I think that might be a whole nother voice. <laughs> you have too many voices in your head. This is big problem. This is big problem, because one caused me to go insane and kill everybody. It's nice. But yeah. You two kind of hang out, and this is our last time skip. You guys really just, you've been bonding for a little while. It's been a, about a week or two. You guys have really been talking, and you've really been enjoying her company. You finally kind of just have someone with you and all that stuff, and you don't have to talk to Phil as much. Late at night, Phil Thank snuggles God. up next to you, and he's all like, oh, come on, man! Come on! You love me! You love me more than this random person! You're a rock! Get out of my brain! <laughs> I feel like you're not giving me the proper attention! I'm gonna fucking what happened in the ocean? to us? You're gonna be sand! <laughs> you're gonna you be sedimentary looking motherfucker! <gasps> oh, how could you? I thought we had something! That was another universe. <laughs> it's like, well, if you think you can get rid of me, that's that's a good try. But I'll always be with you, like a cancer cell. You're never getting rid of me. <laughs> never getting rid of me. <laughs> and my voice is never leaving your head. My beautiful masculine voice. <laughs> my beautiful feminine voice. <laughs> <laughs> you're not in my brain never so these are a lot of your nights <laughs> arguing with Phil talking with Varessa and then one day cause you guys kinda go around you take you take food and all that stuff it's like the Abu in a lot of one distracts and the other steals food and ah, yes yes. then one day you're just kinda chillaxing up in the restaurant and then you hear Varessa's footsteps she comes up, and she has a flyer in her hand. It's a little wet from the road, just a bit. But she comes in, and she's all like, Roy, Roy, look at this. What you got? It's a, it's like a advertisement? A flyer, I think? There are tire tracks on it. It's a little hard to read. <laughs> For what? Well, I'm looking at this, and it looks like a hero school in the States. It's called the Washington... Oh, Tire Tracks. Washington High School of Heroes. Heroes, heroes. Yeah, I just... Oh, yeah. That. You remember that months ago, when you yeah. were working with Anthony, he was telling you about the school. He said he was headed to it. So, what's going through your head? I don't want to go. You don't want to go? I do not. She says, oh, God. wouldn't this be awesome if we could go to this? I've always kind of like, I've kind of wanted to, you know, use my powers for something good. I never really thought about being a hero, but like, seems like the easiest way to put them to use. I kind of want to be proud of my peculiarity, kind of show it to the world and be like, hey. I've got a power, so what? I think it'd be awesome if we could go. Alright. Huh? Alright. Alright what? We, we can go. Wait, really? Wait, how would we get there? And you think of like the multitudes, multitude of ideas. You snuck on a few ships to cross the English Channel to get over to here. You're like, we can probably sneak on a cargo ship. Oh, 100%. Yeah. So you kind of like tell that to her. It's all like, oh my god, like, 
we can do this. I mean, we have to try and get into the school, but I mean, your power is really cool, and mine exists. Maybe we can do it. <laughs> mine exists. <laughs> Oh yeah, game's almost over. We're right at the end. Um, so she kind of runs up to you, just gives you a hug, and she says, thank you, thank you, thank you. Ah, we should like pack everything. When should we leave? <laughs> she says, very excited. Whenever the hell you want. Let's go now. <laughs> like oh, okay. an excited child. Okay, oh, give me a couple minutes. I gotta pack up this whole sleeping bag. It's a lot okay. of work. <laughs> you lazily walk over to it, begin to roll it up. Ugh, so much work. You eventually pack up all your crap. And through a cutscene, we see you guys sneaking through the harbors, doing all that stuff, getting onto a ship, hiding within a crate, and all that stuff. She's been thanking you the entire time. She's so excited. She's like, I hear they have dorms there. That's what says on the fire maybe we can live there and relax that'd be awesome right sure no you don't seem too excited about this i'm really not i mean you don't have to come with me if you don't want to my job is to protect is it not yeah yeah and if your father's goons ever come after you i I'm probably going to have to be there. Okay. Well, let's let's get on the ride. And you guys hop into a crate, kind of sneak around, and the boat begins to set off. And you guys, sneaking around, begin to sail to the United States to attend the Washington High School of Heroes. Doug Dimadab. Doug Dimadab. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, and that everyone, besides the end credit scene, is the end of Roy, Spawn of the Devil. I think that turned out pretty okay. I don't know, what'd you think, Alan? I didn't kill anybody. Yeah, that um, that actually really surprised me. You didn't I, kill I, a single wait, person. No, I, I killed a ton of children. Wait... Did you? Think about it. <gasps> I destroyed a dude's nuts. Oh, no! <laughs> I got a giggle. Okay, so, we have ourselves an end credit scene. Now, this is going to be exciting, because I think this game turned out well. Now then, ahem. Yes, we're in the end game now. Alan. If you would mind muting yourself, my friend. Yeah. Oh, God. Darian, would you mind unmuting yourself? So. This is what our end credit scene holds. After the credits roll by, we see an empty road. A road on a long stretch. It just keeps on going. The land is flat. There's not too much excitement here. And after the camera just sits and pans, eventually you hear... <laughs> and a car zooms by. Inside the car are two individuals. A young man, he looks very, very young. A little boy, rather. And an older gentleman... He's, he's an Asian man. He's very lanky. He has bags under his eyes, short black, thin hair. Uh, his eye color is a steel gray. And you notice that he just has this dead look in his eyes. He's looking forward at the road, complete tunnel vision. He's just not responding. He just... Hey, Dad, Dad. And uh, Darian goes over to like nudge the wheel a bit. He's going off the road a bit. <laughs> he doesn't react that much. He just kind of keeps it steady. The camera pans around the car, and you see a bunch of semi-crumpled up papers, but they're opened back up, and they read of a court case. And reading through it, it's for 
uh, basically, basically the custody of children. And by the looks of it, it looks like he lost. And he just stares off into the road and continues to drive. He does not pay his son any attention. Darian, do you want to say anything? Do you want to do anything? What do you want to do? I'm just waiting for him to get back at the house. I want to cheer him up, but I have nothing to say. It's I just take a look at those eyes, the eyes that once held some sort of fire in them, and it's gone now. I <sighs> yeah, you don't know what to say. And the car just continues to drive. The camera watches as the car slowly disappears into the distance, shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. And that's our end credit scene. Wait, I I was going to say the things when I got to the house. No, no, that's my end credit scene. Oh, well, it's not I mean, supposed to be long. I was going to say something. No, you weren't. It's no, my end credit scene. It's <laughs> the backstory. No, it's just made to tease. All you gotta right. save that stuff for the good, the goodies. Oh, okay. I thought you, I thought you weren't gonna bring that up anymore. Um, so it might be in the next game. Potentially, hopefully. I haven't planned anything just yet. All right. But Tim, that is the end of our recording. So.